Just text, I know it's a toss Oh, but I hate the fact that we lost such Ayy The Uber pulling up on call Tell me as you trying to fall through I'ma leave it up to you What you wanna do? Look, I'm trying to spend this time with you No, we overdue what you're doing right now, right now. Baby, won't you swing my way? It's been a day and I've been thinking all oh, long I know I want you Long time since the last time Got a tab, we could run up Knew you from the way, now we grown up My look, yeah, made the realest most nervous But if you want it, tap it I think that I know somewhere that we could go to crash it We could keep the pace on slow Now I'm paid by the sentence Taking my time with it Baby, give me yours So I could get some butterflies trapped in your rib cage. Let me know we on the same page Give me with a text voice, note or an emoji Waiting all day for your name on the ID So if you want it, tap it I think that I know somewhere that we could go to crush it And we could keep the pace on slow
attention But I keep everybody at a distance If I build it, will y'all really come? Bought all these panties, but I really don't wear none I like boys and I like girls, but I love my Conversations, debates, and advice that keep you turned up. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the High Power Podcast. I'm your girl, Princella the Queen Maker. Thank y'all so much for showing up. If you are a new listener, go ahead and put a star in the comment section. Go ahead and put a star in the comment section. Tonight is a subscriber night. It's a subscriber night, so you have the ability to comment as long as you have been a subscriber for 20 minutes or more. Right? Thank you all so much. And it's, you know, when you put a, when you put a lot of work in, when, you've been, when you put a lot of work in, 
you can sit around and you can see the fruits of your labor, right? And when you just keep working at it and you just keep chugging away, you will eventually begin to see results. If your intentions are pure, if your intentions are pure, you will be a light. You will operate and act as a light to bring people out of darkness into the light. And that is my objective, is to bring women into the light. Planet Earth depends on women being in the divine place, right? And so what I do here is I teach women. I am a teacher before I'm anything. And I have combined uh, a comedy or entertainment into my teaching to make it more palatable, to make it exciting, to, to make it a thrill because people don't like boring things, right? And so I know how to feed the soul and I'm here to feed your soul. I am unbiased. I am unbiased in my approach and what I talk about. I just tell the truth here, right? I'm not a panderer. I don't stroke egos. And if, if you've been here long enough, you know I don't stroke egos. I can, I, can be pretty, I can be pretty cutthroat sometimes, right? Especially with the women. And here's the reason why. The, the angle that I come from, I come from love. I move on the energy and the frequency of love. Love does not mean that you coddle people. Love does not mean that you tiptoe and walk on eggshells. Sometimes people need to hear things and they need raw truth. They need to be able to self-reflect, right? And one of the things that I get on women about over here is their lack of self-reflection. Seeing themselves in the mirror and accepting responsibility for the decisions that they have made in their lifetimes and their okay I bring you into awareness here I teach women the nature of men I teach women who men are at their core I also teach women who they are at their core but women are so far out of alignment she is not aware that she is a male and a female vessel. She does not, she is unaware of this. A lot of women believe that being feminine is being quote unquote physically attractive. That's what they think. They think makeup makes them feminine. They think dresses, they think a nice hourglass figure and all of that, they think that makes them feminine. And they have failed to comprehend that masculine and femininity is more dealing with the mind as opposed to your body, okay? And so women do not realize how big of a threat and how big of a danger they are unto themselves and everything around them due to being conditioned to be like a male in a female body, okay? That's what she is, okay? She doesn't think like a woman. She doesn't behave like a woman. She doesn't move like a woman. None of that, okay? And I'm here to rectify that and make women aware of their own behavioral patterns, OK, they need to be made aware of their behavioral patterns. So I am very against women competing against each other. I am 1000 percent against women competing with each other because that is a male thing. And the reason why women can't get out of it and they don't understand that it's a male thing 
is because they have been conditioned under patriarchy. Now, I have several videos that I have done breaking down the four-step process to demoralization. I am not going to break down the four-step process to, I mean, not demoralization, but the four-step process to ideological subversion. I'm not going to break it down here, but I am going to give you a quick run through. Hopefully you can keep up. But if you can't keep up, if you just go back and binge watch my materials, you will find it. Okay. So there was this gentleman by the name of Yuri Bezmenov. He was a uh, de facto, an ex-KGB de facto. And he did an interview back in the 80s about ideological subversion. And ideolog ideological subversion is a type of warfare based on removing the philosophies that, f that are the foundation of whatever political uh, ideology that you're rolling on. Okay. So in order to subvert a nation or a people there's a four step process the first step is to demoralize i have talked about what demoralization is in order to demoralize there has to be moralization first so when you all talk about morality when you speak about morality what you're speaking about is a byproduct of a philosophy. Philosophy creates morality. Okay. Morality and philosophy are created at the top of the pyramid. So those people who create philosophy and produce the byproduct called morality, they're the ones who push all of that down to the people at the bottom of the pyramid. So what you believe is right and wrong, good and bad to do and not to do. You get that from philosophy. OK, because we live in a patriarchal society, all of the philosophies that you roll on come out of the nature of a male it is the male who is creating the philosophies that produce the byproduct called morality and then they push it down to the people on the bottom and these people get indoctrinated and their ideas of what is right and wrong shifts based on the philosophy so the philosophies that run this country and around the globe, you have economic philosophies and you have religious philosophies. All of these philosophies and practices come out of the nature of a man. Therefore, you end up with what? Competition. Competition in the quote unquote free market, the illusion of a free market, which would be capitalism so because you live in a patriarchal society that is driven by the economic philosophy of capitalism you create people specifically women you make women begin to behave like males you get your competition from the the economic philosophy of capitalism which bases everything on scarcity and resource hoarding that is the nature of a male scarcity and resource hoarding is the nature of the male so the male has created these philosophies and incorporated his nature and interwound them into the philosophies conditioning conditioning everybody both male and female to behave like males so now you get women who roll on an individualistic philosophy that is driven by competition and resource hoarding 
competition, resource hoarding, and scarcity. When you operate in these levels, which is below the waist, here is where jealousy, competition, envy, anger, all of that stems out of people being pushed into their lower nature and functioning off of scarcity. So that is De that is moralization and demoralization. Demoralization is when you remove the philosophies that contain the morality. So now to show you how true that is, go back to when before they took prayer out of the schools, right? There was a time where people were telling you how to behave, what to do and what not to do. Then they took prayer out of schools. Remember, religious philosophy, right, is a part of, is a byproduct of, or religious philosophy produces morality. But that religious philosophy is a byproduct of patriarchal philosophy. So when you begin to remove the religious philosophy, guess what goes with it? The morality that was produced from the religious philosophy that is now removed. This is what you call demoralization. So that's the first step to ideological subversion. Second step to, de to ideological uh, subversion is destabilization. destabilization. So now that you remove the foundation of what causes people to behave a certain way. Now they're unstable and do not know how to function because they no longer have morality to lean on. Okay. They do not have morality to lean on at this point. So they're destabilized. Three, third step process, crisis, pop. Hit them in the mouth. Now that you took the technique away, let's just think in terms of boxing. When a boxer is in the ring, sticking and moving, doing, you know, boxing, right, 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 ta, 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 doing his little box move. This is the technique. That's look at that as moralization, morality. But then you tell the boxer, you ain't got to do it like this no more. You don't have to follow these rules. You can just box how you want to box. Bam. So now the boxer begins to lose his trained technique and he starts to willy nilly just throw fists here and there with no technique. This is where you have destabilization. Then crisis is when you hit the boxer that has no technique anymore. Boom. Dang, you hit him in the face. Bam. You jab him. Boom. That he's hitting. He's getting hit with crisis, crisis, crisis here. As that continues to happen, the fourth step to ideological subversion is normalization. There is a normalization period. Normalization conditions you to accept the new way of things operating. Why did I go through that? Because I need you to understand normal does not mean natural. Normal does not mean natural. It just means that you have now successfully adapted to a new environment, to a new way of conditioned behavior, right? So what I'm telling you now is that the, the, the modern woman is normalized into dysfunction and she is unaware of it and so is the male but our focus is not the male because boys will be boys and our goal is not to change them and force them to do anything because that's their job okay we don't baby males here okay so in order to reverse the messed up behavior, you have to make women aware, consciously aware 
of their own behavior that contributes to the dysfunction. Most of everybody believes that God is a man. And as a result of believing that God is a man, subconsciously, everyone is tolerating the nature of a male without question. Without question, which is lack of critical thinking, which is where they want you. So my job here is to educate you as women. And so today I want to talk about the dangers of a so-called pick me. I want to talk about the dangers of a male identified woman. This is important to talk about because the nature of feminine energy is powerful, very, very powerful. And if that energy is not on your side, it can be used as a weapon to destroy. And the last thing we need is a woman using her power blindly to destroy. So today I was tagged to a, a, a few people reached out to me today to tag me to a video of someone speaking about me. At first, I was not going to listen to it, but then I obliged. I say, okay. So I sat there and I listened. And I said, ooh, ooh, this is uh, dangerous. Why is this dangerous? First and foremost, the person who was doing the commentary got triggered to make a video about me. Now, I need you to understand what it means to be triggered. I need you to be I need you to be aware of what it means to be triggered. It means for you to come across a stimulus that causes an automatic response that has been embedded into your subconscious mind that you are unaware of because the subconscious mind is the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. It is an automatic, it is a automatic receiver. It is an automatic receiver dealing with the environment and it produces reactions instantaneously. It produces reactions instantaneously without conscious thought. So when a person is triggered to move, when a person is triggered to do, it is because they came across a stimulus that has induced an automatic response. So what was the stimulus that induced this automatic response into this particular person? She came across one of my viral clips from the, the interview that I did. And it didn't take but one phrase or one sentence to cause her to do a, a, a three hour video <laughs> or a three hour live on me. Right. And the thing that I said was men were created to be slaves without investigation, without critical assessment. She instantaneously did a video alive for three hours a three hour live with absolutely no knowledge information or understanding of what i do a three hour live on one sentence and then during it she utilized manipulative tactics to get other women who also did not know me or even came across the clip, she co-opted them into speaking negatively 
against me with some real hateful energy. Now, this is important that you understand this because y'all hanging out with women like this. Some of your friends are like this. This is why it's very important that you pay attention to people. Now, one of her gripes, she was very, very upset. We're looking at people who operate in a very low frequency, very low vibratory frequency. She was upset because my content is taking off, right? And I'm saying what I'm saying. And supposedly she has been doing this so long and she ain't getting no recognition. And so she had my picture behind her for three hours <laughs> going in because her channel is not growing. It was pure envy, pure hatred, right? And pure jealousy. Her core audience is males. She has been talking to males and taking their side as a tool against other women, right, for years, for years. And based on what I did here, because I didn't sit there and listen to, to much, to no long, long period of time. But as people kept tagging me, I would pop in and hear what she was talking about at the time. And I listened long enough to come across this understanding that she's been quote unquote talking to men and not getting no support from men she can't sell no products she don't have a following and so she's upset that my platform is 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 growing or whatever the case may be right and she then says this she says this if I was younger. I would take all y'all men. Right. But I'm over 40. Right. And look, I got the good hair. I'm light skin. This, that, and the other one. Because she's trying to appeal to men. And it did. It never dawned on her one time. That you're talking to men. And they don't value you. You just said they they not spending money with you. She got merchandise that they not buying. You catering to them and you're not getting anything in return. She supposedly had a free consultation that she was offering and didn't get no clientele off of that. Now, instead of self-reflection, instead of self-reflection and analyzing her own behavior and her own choices, we start to attack other people because you are comparing yourself to others, which tells you that you are disconnected from your authentic self. You don't know why you're here and you're doing the same things over and over again, expecting a different result. When people are not getting the things that they want out of life because of patriarchy, because of capitalism, where women have been indoctrinated, where they worship the phallus and cut off and dis cut off their women friends and cut off the female support system, you get a very, very toxic angry and upset individual she wants to claim that the men are the value meanwhile men have not supported you in all of these years your channel is not growing and instead of them purchasing something from you after you went on your wine and crybaby mission instead of them purchasing something from you they call to tell you or they get online to tell you maybe you should start instead of 
creating this material for men. Maybe you need to blur the lines and start targeting some women. Now, my message to women is that women are the value. My message to women is that women are a resource to men. Women are a resource to men. So when you tap into a resource, you get rewards. I say that women are the value. Men claim that they are the value. Yet when you're catering to men, you are digging through an empty well. You are digging through an empty well. So she then says, I can't get no support because I tell the truth and I hold women accountable. And it's the government, it's the agent, it's all of this. People refuse to self-analyze. And women, when they do not get the attention and the things that they claim they want, the first thing that they do is start comparing themselves to another woman and they grow a lot of envy. And when they grow envy, if they are in proximity of a male, they will begin to use the male as a weapon to destroy the women that they do not like. She also said, I'm glad that none of these men have said that she's the type of woman that they would be with. She's so envious of me. I don't even know what this, this, I don't even know who this person is. And I need y'all to understand this because you have people around you just like this, just like this, right? And I'm telling you, when you surround yourself with males who are destitute, who are in scarcity mode eternally, right? That energy brings you down with it. You are who you hang around. So her audience is masculine energy and she's crying and upset with women because women are getting recognition that she feels like she ain't getting. So the from what I was looking at, she was co-opting males in without playing a clip with, she just basically regurgitated, not even re paraphrased one sentence and then started co-opting people who didn't even ever hear me or that, or even seen the clip. She started co-opting them into agreeing with her and attacking women like myself. This is the negativity that will spawn when you are dealing with women who are male identified because a male identified woman is typically not getting what she's talking about. She's not getting the praise. She's not getting the worship. She's not getting the attention. So she's so low on attention and needed from a male so bad that she's willing to go against other women to get the validation. So they told her instead of buying her, her products, they told her how to try to compete with another woman disingenuously disingenuously as opposed to examining her own thought process, right? Examining a person's own thought process ain't even in their minds. So when you see women go out with other women and you can't, and you have been trained 
to disconnect from your intuition, you can't even tell if your home girl is against you. You can't even tell if your home girl is jealous of you because you have been doped up on forgiving people, over giving people the benefit of the doubt, overriding red flags, trying to be a trying to get the validation from other people to say that you're a good person as as you do that you override critical pieces of information information that puts you into a situation where they might invite you on a road trip get you out somewhere right and show you how they really feel about you right because behind closed doors this is how people be talking about you, right? This, this is how people move. And you cannot trust any woman, not a single one, that worships phallus, that worships the phallus. You cannot. So I pulled up something else. I want to read this to you. And I want you to see how they sound. I want you to see how they really sound. Okay. Check it. This is written by a woman. This post was written by a woman. Stop dating mentally broke girls. I know many girls and ladies gonna be angry with this post, but try to learn more about it. Men, stop, stop. You're directing your message to men and everybody with wisdom, everyone with wisdom says that you cannot talk to men. Oh, speaking of, before I go here, before I say what I'm going to say, this is what I did mean to also tell you, she said, as she co-opted one of these other women in the chat. Baby, let me tell you something. These women are so lost. One of the chicks got up there and said that it is the woman who has a reckless ego and whose ego is so violent that it needs to be stopped. And saying men aren't the problem. It's women who are the problem and men need to stand up to these women and stop this behavior. Right. Right. Basically promoting violence by males against other women that they do not like. It's important that you understand this because remember just a couple months ago, Shaquella Robinson, when she went on that trip with her quote unquote so-called friends in Mexico and then ended up unalived, right? You remember the black girl that went out with a, um, with a group of white girls and ended up over sleepover and ended up unalived, Right? Baby, you got to start learning how to see through people. You got to start learning how to connect with your intuition because let me tell you something. These chicks who worship the phallus, they do not have a support network of women and they despise women. And anybody who despises the feminine, they are looking to destroy the feminine. That's what they're looking to do. And they will do it by any means necessary. Okay. Socrates. Socrates said this. In all of us, even in good men, stop. I got a lot of stuff to show y'all tonight. Stop right there. Even in good men, I need y'all to roll back all the way 
patriarchy has been going on for the past almost 6,000 years. Not long. It's, it's very young, very new compared to the rest of the planet or to the planet's life, lifetime. When he said in all of us, women were totally excluded from all of this. This was man to man discussions. And when these ancient men were talking, they were never talking about women. And when they did talk about women, they made it clear in their quotations. But when they spoke about us and all of these other quotes, they automatically default to men because that's who they were talking about. Men speaking about other men. So that's why he says in all of us. Even in good men, which the more, which the majority think that they're good men, but even in good men, there is a lawless, wild beast nature. Stop. This is Socrates, y'all. This is Socrates. There is a lawless, wild beast nature, which peers out in sleep which peers out in sleep. The religion was created for men to govern and control the wildebeest that exists within them. Religion was never created to focus on women being better. Religions Secondary purpose was to control the woman and keep her suppressed underneath a male. But religion played a role in controlling the wild beast that lives within the male. In all of us, even, even in good men, there is a lawless wild beast nature, nature. Not a wild beast person, baby, a wild beast nature, which peers out in sleep. Okay. So this chick that was on there telling, talking and saying that women are wild beasts that need to be contained and controlled because they out of whack. I'm telling you that they have flipped nature 180 degrees and have brainwashed women to see a false reality. They are placating to the male as if he is a innocent victim that is being attacked by women. That's the narrative. So when you listen to women like this, including this chick that's addressing men about women, I need you to understand that these women are deeply programmed and you can't help them. Your best bet is to stay away from them and listen to how doped up they are on penis juice. Any chick that is doped up on penis juice, you really need to distance yourself from her. Guys, how do some of you even cope with dating a mentally broke girl? It's real simple because they mentally broke themselves like attracts like what you think. I know some still don't understand what I mean by mentally broke girls. I mean, one. A girl who doesn't have transport fare to see someone who she claims she loves every damn time. Most people have no earthly idea what love is, including the male. So I'm not going to go into that. But given the state of affairs... With women being disconnected from the actual support system and how this system has created people to live in an individualistic mentality. Right. Where there is no interdependence, but every man for himself in a system like this is real 
understandable why you have haves and have nots, right? And why somebody can't quote unquote have no transportation fare. But not having transportation fare, I'm not sure what, how that plays into mentally broke given the position and the angle that you're coming from because the very males that you're talking to are not only mentally broke, they're emotionally broke and spiritually broke. The majority of them. So I, I really don't even understand where she's coming from given the angle. Two, a lady who can't get you a birthday or Valentine's Day gift but expects you to bring the world for her during hers well if you've been watching me long enough you'll understand that every reason that a man is dealing with a woman is because he wants to use her and she is offering something very big for him to even be staying with her right so money is something that men keep saying they don't care about right so ain't nothing in life for free and you getting something pretty great out of her otherwise you wouldn't be with her otherwise you wouldn't be with her but anyway everybody is crazy in this society including the male and the female but let's go on someone who can't comfor comfortably call you on the phone for five minutes now she's talking to males who are at these same levels yet she's Catering her message to men who are mentally, emotionally, and spiritually broke themselves, right? So quick to throw a woman under the bus so a male can trample over them by making this long ass list to males who do not have the ability to rise because if they did, Chances are they wouldn't even be seeing your post because they are too busy focusing on something that really matters. So your target audience ain't no Elon Musk's. Your target audience ain't no Jeff Bezos. It ain't even it ain't even a rapper. It's an everyday guy who ain't got nothing else to do but sit on Facebook reading this mess. Someone who can't comfortably call you on the phone for five minutes. Always flashing and complaining she doesn't have airtime even when you just sent her airtime. How, how old is this? Is, is this something that I'm missing about airtime? Is it something that I'm missing? We still paying for minutes on cell phones? I'm confused. I, I I really am confused, right? Are we just talking about cell phone period? All right? Talking to the same guys who approached the who approached said woman. This this what I don't this this the part I don't get. Because men pursue women. It's not women approaching these dudes. So men pursue women. And you pursued her for a reason now the male the female is talking to him about what not to tolerate out of somebody whom he approached and pursued you will still be a you will still be the one to call her and ask her whether she has seen the card maybe she's talking to somebody overseas because I didn't know that Americans used calling cards, airtime cards, to talk to other people in the U.S. So are you talking about passport, girl, passport bros and they international lovers? International lover. Are you, is this about girls, the preference that's overseas? Because who in the hell is using an airtime card? in America I'm just I'm just reading I'm just asking a question right so don't tell me the passport bros going over there 
and mad because a chick asked him for a Gucci bag, right, to be all up in her face. I mean, how do you guys cope dating a lady who thinks re a relationship is an occupation? Where she is supposed to be paid and taken care of. Listen to me. Stop hanging around these chicks that are dealing with males. Because they don't even have no respect for your energy. Let me tell you something about a relationship one more time. Only broke people want relationships. Broke people, mentally, spiritually, financially, sexually, physically, broke people get in relationships because they have a need that, that they need filled and then they go seeking for a, another person to fill that void and they want the void filled for free. And the only way to get the void filled for free is under the pretense of a relationship that you supposed to do this for people who you in a relationship with. Therefore, you drop all of the demands to be compensated for your energy when you hop in a relationship because people in a relationship are looking for quote unquote what? reciprocity the expectation of reciprocity which ain't nothing but another word for what transaction i quid pro quo i do this for you you do this for me right transaction quid pro quo reciprocity all the same thing so now as a woman she is directing her message to men to ask why or how y'all can cope with a lady in a relationship who expects to be paid or compensated for her energy and to be taken care of. A woman ain't supposed to be taken care of in a relationship and she ain't supposed to have no demands on her energy. This is coming from a woman. And the males use women like this as a tool to sabotage and bully other women that they want revenge on, that they don't like or do like, but can't get the time of day out of them. Number five, even if it's an occupation, what services is she actually offering to be privileged to receive such benefits? Listen to me. This is what a male identified woman looks like. Helping the male try to extract resources for no cost. The chick that was whining and complaining about me going viral and women supporting my message. Baby, I got so much to say about this. <laughs> Let's back up just a second. She has an issue because women support my message and do not support her message. And somebody gave her advice to tap into women, since men ain't supporting you, but still maintain the message directed towards men, since men ain't going to buy your shit. This is specifically what the guy said today. He said, and I quote, don't. Brand, don't wear this brand that you created that is focusing solely on men. Change it to this because even women who have been raped by men 
can get on board with this message. Hold women accountable. So even if a woman was raped by a man, she'll still want to hold women accountable. This is so you have males and females who are at the bottom bottom pit of hell trying to scheme and figure out a way to tap into the natural resources of a woman while still hating and despising the feminine. Right? The male brings nothing but a bag to the table to fill with all of women's gifts. And the game is how much can you take for as little investment as possible? This is a detriment because when you suck the resources out of something and deplete it without putting back, you destroy life. So you have women here pushing and rallying for men to suck the life out of women. And if they can't do it, to use a form of violence. Th this is their message. Because in their mind, this is a spiritual war that they're fighting. And they believe that the God of death is the holy divine God. So they find it totally justifiable to wreak havoc on women who are distancing themselves, doing their own thing and rejecting males to protect their resources. Time is the most valuable resource, the most valuable commodity that you have because you cannot replace time. You cannot replenish time. Time is not a renewable resource, but everything else is. And they do not want to compensate you for your time. And so men are able to do what they are doing because you have low level women backing them and fueling them. Right? If it's an occupation, what services is she actually offering? And then women go in to try to explain all of what they're offering just to be devalued because that's the game. Get you to try to sell yourself and impact your self-esteem so they can take from you as much as they want to without much investment. <laughs> what service is she act actually offering to be privileged? Listen. To be privileged to receive such benefits. Let me tell you something about interdependence trees and plants are their own selves they are trees they grow leaves they bear fruit that's who they are and the trees offer up oxygen we as a human species we are supposed to be our own individual authentic selves and we work cohesively with the trees to sustain the life of each other to keep a free flowing energy in circulation. So the trees give off what? Oxygen. And we give off what? Carbon dioxide. We can't do nothing with carbon dioxide, but the trees can. We can do something with oxygen, but the trees can't. This is what you have called a symbiotic relationship, symbiosis. And symbiosis, interdependence, and synergy are in direct alignment with the principle of cause and effect. Of cause and effect. For every action 
there is an equal and opposite reaction. Right? To give is to receive. To give is to receive. This dodo bird, this dodo bird says, if it's an occupation, what services is she actually offering to be privileged? It is not a privilege to receive after you give. That is a natural occurring phenomenon. It is a law. That's what's going to happen. You give, you receive. You cannot receive without giving and you cannot give without receiving. But she don't want the woman to receive nothing. Even though the woman is the one with all of the gifts that these dudes are coming for. So they sit behind a desk because or a keyboard because they are depleted. Women are depleted in their self-esteem. They are depleted in their self-worth because nobody who is fully aware of themselves and in tune with their authentic self is competing with anyone but themselves. Outdoing themselves as opposed to others and not looking to sympathize with a person or a group of people who have no interest in personal development. Zero. But we point the finger at women all the time. While catering to the mentally dysfunctional, the mentally incapable. She says, note, sex is not a benefit only to men. I'm confused about that. Note, sex is not a benefit only to men. I'm trying to, I'm trying to comprehend in my mind what she mean because I don't understand the construction of the sentence. I don't understand the construction of this sentence. Sex is not a benefit only to men. That means she don't know the nature of a man of a man because sex, they whole life depend on sex. Their whole mental functioning depends on sex, right? Depends on them passing their genes and they need a female body to do this, which greatly impacts their self-esteem, which greatly impacts their social status. I'm trying to understand what she say is not a benefit only to men. Are you saying that sex is a benefit to women? How would sex be a benefit to women when women are the ones who constantly have to reject men and risk being unalived because she say no? The pick me or the male identified woman lives in a land of delusion. And she has deep rooted self hate issues as well as feminine hate issues. They cannot stand themselves. How do some guys manage to date such ladies? The male is desperate and will date any and everything if it provides a critical need that he wants met at the time. I do not understand what you are asking as if the women are the worst thing created on planet Earth. Meanwhile, it's men who are destroying everything. But we just turn a blind eye and pretend that all of the aggressive behavior comes from women. 
For those of you who do not know, I interviewed a primatologist yesterday. And I'll be airing that interview on Monday. What I need you to understand, because not only am I going to air the interview, I'm going to do a secondary analysis of the interview. Why? Because in my interview, I only asked questions. It was not really a conversation. It was me just asking questions, delving into the mind of him to get to see what he had to say about certain things. And then after I got the answers, my objective was to take that footage and to go and break down and analyze and draw and draw connecting connected dots to show you everything that I have been saying. So it's just more of a questioning coming from me. And I, I, I gave them a little, a few pieces of pushback on some things. But when I take that footage, I am going to I am going to go through it with a fine tooth comb like I do everything so I can show you um, based on his understanding of bonobo matriarchal societies and chimpanzee patriarchal societies. I'm going to show you how the female actually really gets down in a purely natural environment okay since these are since these are our closest relatives okay but i can tell you right now the behavior that you see here written that is not the behavior in these primates okay females anyway so see guys don't ever date a mentally broke girl, no matter how gorgeous you think she is. They are serious liabilities. Women are serious liabilities is what, what she's saying. How do, no wonder, check this out. How do some guys manage to date such ladies? No wonder suicide and depression victims are mostly men. No wonder suicide and depression victims are mostly men. Now, this is where listening to a dummy negatively impacts not only women, but men too. Because she's reinforcing a serious, a serious issue in men and reinforcing it them to believe that their problems are a result of women as opposed to the problem being of this unnatural environment that was created from people at the top that contributes or is the main driving factor for men's suicide and depression. It's not women. It's not women. It is the fact that men have so much pressure on them to live up to standards that are virtually impossible for the male to live up to because he is not wired to handle all that pressure and be able to handle freedom at the same time. He can't do it. And so as a result, a lot of them suffer extreme pain. Now think about it. Remember I told y'all, I told you that men, when they, when they separate from women or they break up, males feel pain. They go through physical pain. They experience inflammation after two or more breakups. They experience inflammation if they live alone for six years or longer. Men hurt physically, not because they love you. But because they hook up an energetic cord to women and that cord connecting has a strong impact on the male's etheric or unconscious or invisible body because he's a parasite by nature. So when he instantly hooks this cord up, 
it's like all of his organs and all of his life force energy. It's like it's like an umbilical cord. He's getting all of that nutrients or spiritual nutrients and mental nutrients from this in, invisible cord. So when the woman cuts this cord instantaneously without any warning for the male, it physically hurts him. It, it physically impacts the male. So now you're dealing with men being divorced caught and, and, and separated from their girlfriends and all of that. You have that issue that they're dealing with physical pain. Then they have these unrealistic expectations coming from the government on how to behave when they not only have to deal with this physical pain, they got to work on trying to con control the effects of testosterone and they're having a difficult time controlling that. OK, and then with women not knowing the nature of a male and she's putting all this pressure by constantly trying to get him to do things that were created for women to do with each other, like be responsible, help with the kids, help with the house. The male ain't created to do that as a result of all of this and then not no consistent sexual release. These males become overburdened, weighed down, and this is what contributes to their suicide and depression rates. Not them, quote unquote, dating these mentally broke women. So pygmies will incite anger and they will give these males an excuses for their failure, which induces violence, which makes them look more into falsehoods like religion to get answers of how to handle a quote unquote contentious woman, because in their eyes, you are acting belligerently. You know how many dudes keep calling me the devil and I'm evil and I'm Satan because I am putting in women's mind that they are the value and women protecting themselves from men. Do y'all understand that they see the loss of a woman as evil? I'm evil because I'm getting women to protect themselves because they are afraid to lose the woman as a resource. So this justifies their violence. So you have this pick me who is Pushing that narrative. Number seven. Rather date a lady who adds something beneficial to your life. He wants a woman to add something beneficial to his life. Right. But he don't want to add nothing to the woman. But pain and heartache. But let me tell y'all something, ladies. I want y'all to visualize. You got on a white shirt. White shirt, I don't care if it's long sleeve or what. You have on a white shirt. And you come across a person. Who has been rolling in dirt. Their hands are dirty. Their clothes are dirty. They got oil on their face and all that. And this person goes to hug you with your white shirt on. What is going to happen to your white shirt? Ain't no reason to wait on your responses. The white shirt is going to get dirty. The reason why I asked it like that is because I need you to understand that males who are driven to the lowest nature. They are are dirt that's all they have on the inside of them they don't have nothing but hell running through that whole empty space when they come to you because the outer world is a reflection of the inner world when they come in proximity to you that energy or the lack thereof that empty space in there all that negativity that energetically comes off on you when you're in close proximity 
But what happens if you sleep with that? What happens if you let that inside of your body? Right? All of that dirt is coming off on you. All of it. Right? And then they want to talk about women. They want to talk about women having all of this negativity around them. It is because they are in proximity to males. It is because they keep letting males touch them. That's the reason why your value drops. Because most of these guys that you come into contact with have dirt on the inside of them. They're empty, nothing but negativity. And when they touch your white shirt, which is supposed to be quote unquote pure. Right? Clean. You get it dirty. And your value drops. But meanwhile, she's talking to males who are mentally broken about, quote unquote, dating women who's mentally broke. As if he qualifies for anybody higher than what he is himself. Rather date a lady who adds something beneficial to your life. Things like emotional intelligence. Financial intelligence, spiritual intelligence, or other intelligence. The low-grade male does not value intelligence. They don't value financial literacy. Because a woman's achievements shine negatively on the male who is deficient. And the reason why this shines negatively on him is because he has been told that he's the head of the household. He's the leader and women can't do what men do. And then they look out into the world and see the world feeding back a different picture, which creates a feeling called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance makes people angry. When men get angry, it is because their testosterone levels rise Tapping on that amygdala. Testosterone levels rise. Tapping on that amygdala and we get anger. So you mix anger from cognitive dissonance in with testosterone. And what you end up with? You end up with a violent, jealous man who may potentially unalive the person that you say needs to have emotional intelligence, financial intelligence, spiritual intelligence, and other intelligence. These women are not compatible with these low grade males. But for some reason, you think you can tell a low grade male that he got the option to deal and pick, pick somebody who has emotional intelligence, financial intelligence, spirits, intelligence, and all that other intelligence as if he is on that level. As if women are not human beings but males can just go pick what they want like they got the power to do that when they don't when they don't eight date someone who's capable of calming the storm within your soul date someone who is capable of calming the storm within your soul. How many times did I tell you that men need women? For a million different reasons. The male cannot calm his own storm. He depends on the woman to calm the storm within him. The male goes through constant internal storms. And hasn't learned himself how to calm his own storm, which tells you that he is not the type of person that you would even want to get in a rela relationship with because he's going to be dependent on you being that calming effect. But what if you having a bad day? What if you're going through your own human experience and he expects you to always be this calm person that can calm the storm within him? Remember what Socrates says in all of us, even in good men, 
There is a lawless, wild beast nature which, pe- which peers out in sleep. Wild beast nature. Since this wild beast nature is in all of them, they have a hard time calming the storm within. Therefore, they seek out women to what? Be my peace. I want you to be my peace. Peace, be still. Feminine energy is a still energy. Masculine energy is a moving energy. Peace, be still. The male cannot be still. So he needs that who can be still to feed him. But here's the problem. Do you understand diffusion? Let me let y'all know what diffusion is for those of you who are not scientists and didn't pay attention in, in science class. If you come, if you go outside and it's 32 degree weather outside, it's cold. Your, your, your blood flow is slowing down. It's cold outside, right? When you come into the house, it's 78, 80 degrees in the house because the heat on, right? If you go into that house and somebody is in the house already, their, their, their body temperature is warm. Yours is cold. When that person puts their hand on you, your cold arm, your cold hand, there is an energy transfer that happens. This is called diffusion. Where energy, the heat from this hand goes to a place with less heat. That is an energy transfer called diffusion. The male is empty on the inside. And he has this wild beast nature that needs to be tamed. And since he can't tame it, and all of these storms that he deals with on a day-to-day basis this is what drives him to say i want a woman to be my peace because feminine energy is peace peace be still but when you have so much turmoil you create and you get with somebody who is full of energy what happens is a diffusion like energy transfer So the person that that had full energy, you're now sucking some of that energy to try to make you whole. But guess what happens? The male can never get whole. It's like the male is a bottomless damn pit that cannot be filled. So as a result, instead of the 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 distribution or the diffusion, even and out across the board. It continues to suck and pull. In a, in a lopsided mechanism because there is no homeostasis here. There is no synergy. There is no symbiotic or interdependent relationship. It's an energy sucking mechanism that never stops. And this is how women go from peaceful to being hell. They go from peaceful to being hell. And then men say you in your masculine, right? I like them feminine, fit and friendly, not realizing the energy transfer takes a woman out of quote unquote peace, rest, creativity and brings her down to a level of survival just by men putting their hands on them and being around them because that storm that's constantly going on, they they can't calm that storm. They can't calm it. So a woman don't need to be his peace either. But people want to be dishonest 
and they want women to continue to be lied to so that they can continue to suck on these women with no pushback. And when they do get any pushback, they just want to be able to reserve the you should have chose better card. They want to be able to it play the you should have chose better card. They don't actually want you to choose better day, though. They don't want you to change nothing because it impacts them. Number nine, forget that yin yin talk. Don't tolerate any woman's brokenness or stupidity just because of her physical beauty. I'm going to show you this chick now. There are actually a lot of extremely gorgeous and beautiful ladies with common sense. This is her way of advertising herself, trying to sell herself while taking a shit on other women, right? Because these, these, these women need validation so much because they empty on the inside and a empty woman, when she gets low, she becomes very vindictive and vengeful against other women who she feels has abundance. But if she would stop centering men, she could be abundant because you would have respect for the feminine, which is the life giver, right? And other women, you could be abundant. But when you isolate yourself and become independent, and then you go towards the male who is broken, looking for energy from him, you will remain broken as a woman and you'll end up looking like an old hoe. Old and worn ragged, all because you surrounded yourself with life force energy suckers, parasites, predators that do not care about you whatsoever. Number 11. So don't ever think settling for less brothers. One thing I've realized about all these broke girls is not that they don't actually is what they actually don't have. Now look at how she is dressed in these pictures. I want you to see this. Let's, I would like to blow this up. Let me, let me do me a real good, uh, let me do this real quick. I want, I want you to see it. Hold on. Cause we're going, we're going, we're going to analyze the picture too. We're going to analyze the picture too. Mm. Here we go. There we go. Look at it. Now, she did all that dragging women under the ground for male validation just so she could promote herself at the end of it. I'm here for you males, right? Legs wide open to do what? To sexually seduce the male. Huh? Right? Acting like she the quote unquote peace, right? Looking like she got heaven in the house. This is what you call how to catch a predator femininity. Because this is not femininity. Not by a long shot. This is how to catch a predator as prey. And women who do not like themselves do not love themselves and have low self-esteem. Only women who think like that do stuff like this and then take pictures like this because she don't have no other value outside of her quote unquote body because she's light skin, right? And she thinks she's the preference in a, in a change in patriarchy, which she clearly can't see the change happening, right? They still think the winning mechanism is to step on and stomp on other women.
Now I can't tell if this is a product she created. I'm I'm pretty sure it's not. Right? But stay away from women like this. Women like this will get quote unquote ran through. These dudes know that she's a fool. But they will use her as a tool, as a pawn to get to women that they actually do like. That's what they do. And they spend their whole time on planet Earth doing that. And guess what, ladies? Some of these chicks are your friends. They're your aunties. They're your co-workers. You better start listening to your intuition and you better start watching what people saying in spaces where they think they cool, where ain't nobody paying them no attention, right? That's what you need to be focused on. Let's see. So we got that one out the way. Let's look at some more stuff that we got pulled up. Now, let's see what we got here. Uh Uh-oh. Two-thirds of our kids are being raised by the women. Mm -hmm. And like I said, when I say being raised, I'm not saying there needs to be a father. I would like a father in that house. But I know it's not enough of us to go around. We are not even being accountable to the boys in the hood. And we're complaining about the women. I'm ar- I argue with women who are the- making babies yeah, with-, with the irresponsible men that we didn't raise correctly. That's bullshit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's wimp ass weak man shit. Take responsibility for our shit. Stop scapegoating yeah. them. Yeah, I could agree. I could agree to that. All I'm that, saying that, that. is look at all we could be doing better, man. Oh, half, the, get- half the black boys in the fourth grade can't read. What black men doing about that systemically? Black 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 boys are the most unemployed teenager in America. What black men doing about that? Not See, as much. and Ray not Ray, as you much. kept talking about. Mm-hmm. We letting them raise right before our eyes, and then we want to criticize us for ending up with one when we should have made sure there were none. Listen, we all got cho- we all got choices. Just like if I choose to live a lifestyle You're that with could, individualism, that could, I can't deal with that. But that's part of choices. No, it's not. Yeah. We have to deal with this systemically. Here's systemic factors at play. Mm-hmm. You totally divorce your analysis from any systemic factors at all. You ain't mentioned one. You can be talking about her and Pookie and Ray. Two thirds of our kids are being raised by the women, mm-hmm. and like I said. When I say being raised, I'm not saying it needs to be a father. I would like a father in that house. Yeah. But I know it's not enough of us to go around. Yeah. We are not even. All right. So I definitely want to talk about this, right? Now, we all know that Umar, Umar be all over the place. We all know he be all over the place. He say some good stuff and then you turn around and say some old stupid stuff like invading lesbian relationships and stuff like that. Okay. So he be telling half truths, right? This is why people can't completely let him go because sometimes the sucker hit the nail on the head and people don't know how to completely disconnect from him, right? So let's let's go ahead and listen to some of it. Let's go ahead and dissect some of the stuff that he's saying here. It's by the women. Mm-hmm. And like I said... When I say being raised, I'm not saying it needs to be a father. I would like a father in that house. Yeah. But I know it's not enough of us to go around. Yeah. We are not even being accountable to the boys in the hood. Okay. He say he would like to be a father, but the 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 but the, the boys are being raised by women, right? The boys are being raised or in the house with single mothers and single mothers or let's let's not even talk about mothers like i say all the time single a single woman is not a woman without a male a single woman is a woman without a community of women because child rearing and all of the activities that go in to nurture and support and sustain life that was done 
by women as a team effort. The nuclear family cut off the woman's support system where she doesn't have a community anymore and then try to put that responsibility or share that responsibility with a male who is not capable or fit to handle all of this extra responsibility on top of his internal deficits. Okay. Which leaves women to carry the, the load. And when you understand how difficult boys are and their inabilities or their impediments at an early age, then you would understand that a nuclear family structure is more detrimental in this situation because the female cannot handle all of these children by herself, especially one like a boy who is very active and much more sensitive to environmental stressors. Much more sensitive than girls are. So the more boys that a woman has, which is more likely to happen, given the fact that Y chromosomal DNA swims faster than female chromosomal DNA, right? You're more likely to produce boys. And if you have two boys back to back as a single mother with no community support system, you're now overburdened with that kid and you miss critical steps to help develop the child. But the male does not have the natural capability or the natural propensity to go towards helping with that. You have to teach, coach, train, force, get brainwashing with religion to get a male to do and stay because if you don't his nature will push him to leave his nature will persuade him to leave so now the woman is stuck with a lot of responsibility that she was never meant to handle on her own the key is not having a male partner. The key is having a community of women. And you see how that's moving as women across the, the country are starting momums because this is in the nature of the feminine. But women can't get along like this because they're so male identified that they have cut their relationships with women not even in half. They have cut them completely off. So the nuclear family was a war tactic. It was a war tactic. And so when I try to talk to people about this hierarchical system called white supremacy patriarchy, people don't understand how fire works. I'm, I'm convinced that people do not understand how fire works. I want y'all to think about it. If you got a three or four story house and the fire starts on the first floor, the ground floor, and there's nobody there to put the fire out, will the fire engulf the whole building? Will the people at the top get burned first or will the people at the bottom get burned first? If there's nobody to put out the fire, will the people at the top eventually get burned? Yes. Yes. If you start the fire on the first floor, the people at the first floor will get destroyed first. And it takes time to get higher up the building, but eventually they get burned too. So the whole point that I'm saying is this, is that 
the nuclear family issue, the creation of the artificial nuclear family, black people were hit first. They were burned first with the separation or the destruction of the nuclear family. But that does not mean white people were not affected. It just means that the fire is taking a little bit more time to get to them, but they ass catch on fire too, which is what is happening. You see that. Even in the 1986, if y'all been following me for a while, y'all know when I did the 1986 CBS report, what did the guy who was looking, who was studying the black community say at that time? He said that the vanishing black family, right? Is the, the black family is getting hit where it's disintegrated. And he say white people are in trouble too. But at this time, there's still more white fam. They was going through it too because they're higher up on the echelon, but the fire gets to them too. This is the part that people are not understanding when it comes to this hierarchical structure, right? So we focused on the wrong thing. We focus on the wrong thing. When you pump women up with too many kids, with no support system, and with somebody who is virtually incapable, I need y'all to understand that the lower you are on the totem pole, the less help and structure you have to make the nuclear family actually work. When you go up the totem pole, a lot of white people have the money to get to buy a support system. I've known I've had people who were um, a nanny to my child for a short period of time. And they nannied for white women. And when white women have babies, a lot of the times they throw all the responsi responsibility onto the nanny. And those women ain't really nowhere to be found. They keep doing their own thing right after they pop out a child. So that support system and these barriers that are supported financially keep these other quote unquote nuclear families, which aren't real nuclear families because they have the money to pay for a support system and the male ain't really doing a lot in those families either. They just have the ability to pay other people to do it. People on the bottom do not have that ability. So the woman ends up getting knocked up with kids that she cannot handle. And they, and that happened because you have been brainwashed to worship the penis and to get married and to stay monogamous and to stay down. And the male don't know how to stop having sex. So he keeps knocking you up with children until it destroys you mentally, emotionally, and physically. And now you got a bunch of rug rats running out into the hood that nobody can, can control, that nobody can teach. And since you can't teach a man anything, if you don't get to these male children before the age of five, you might as well get ready to wash them off because of their development. Some of them get lucky, but the prop, the, 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 the numbers just do not support the, the biological nature just does not support the male being able to ever figure it out and control himself. So you have a problem running amok in the community because of these philosophies, because of the structure Right. We're complaining about the women. I'm ar I argue with women who are making babies yeah, with, with the irresponsible men that we didn't raise correctly. That's bullshit. And this is why I try or I have to teach women their value. I need to teach women how to choose better because in an environment you're just going to deal with what's in your environment. It's inevitable. 
So women have to begin to, because this is no longer a physical war. This is a mental and spiritual war. So women have to mentally raise their frequency and remove themselves from these situations because the male is being bred out of complete dysfunction and there's virtually no hope for most of them. And so you need males who he already said ain't enough of them to go around. None of these males are going to step up and help children who don't belong to them because of the philosophies that they believe that makes them a simp. So you got a real issue here, y'all. So the only thing that women can do is to realize that it ain't no fixing it. You can't fix what's already broken in this, at this stage in the ball game. You got to disassociate yourself from it, right? You have to, because none of these guys are good choices in situations like that. He's talking about, right? So you got to elevate. Right. That's wimp ass weak man shit. Take responsibility for our shit. Stop. They can't take responsibility for their shit. You see how they don't even want to hear it, but you see how they're not bucking at Umar? Do you see how they're not bucking at Umar? Because they have a respect for Umar, and only a male can talk to other males this way. Because at some point, the male stops respecting women, stops listening to women. So only the male can talk to the male. But once the male starts talking to him like Kevin Samuels, they realize it ain't nothing you can do with them. So then they start talking to women. But men do not need to be talking to women. Women need to be talking to women. They need to be focused on how to help male children before they hit critical ages like three but the conversation is never on that we steady talking about a bunch of adult men who you cannot help at all get yeah. goat now yeah i could agree i could agree to that all that, i'm that, saying that, is that. look at all we could be doing better man oh, half, the, half the black boys in the fourth grade can't read what black men doing about that systemically black 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 boys are the most unemployed teenager in america what black men doing about that not See, Pookie much. and Ray Not Ray, you much. kept talking about? Mm -hmm. We letting them raise right before our eyes. And then we want to criticize us for ending up with one when we should have made sure there were none. Now that's real. But they're not going to take that kind of responsibility. Why? Because the male is not a natural born leader. The male is not a natural born leader, which is the reason why he won't take no responsibility for that. And a woman can't tell him that. Because they have no respect for women and what women have to say. So you can't talk to them. You can't get through to them. Because this hurts their egos. So this is the, this is the reason why I continue to tell women to protect your energy and let them figure it out on their own in hell. And hey, people in hell want ice water. Ain't nobody giving them no ice water in hell. Right? You waste your time talking to males. That's why Kevin Samuels wasn't talking to him when he before he passed away. Right. We all got we all got choices. Just like if I choose to live a lifestyle You're dealing that with could, individualism, that could, again. I can't but deal with that. That's part of choices. No, it's not. We have to deal with this systemically. He systemic factors that we have to deal with this systemically. What is this? What are the systemic factors? Right. The systemic issue is patriarchy patriarchy is male the male's biggest problem because it's freedom it gives the male freedom with no controls and the male cannot handle freedom and because of his biological fragility you only got till about age three to make the strongest impact on the male child males need discipline you have to teach, coach, train males to do everything. They do not have an internal moral compass. They do not have an internal moral compass. And if you take, if you demoralize, listen to me, because I need y'all to understand what's going on 
Remember at the beginning, I told you the four step process to, to subversion, ideological subversion. And the first one is demoralization. When you demoralize a male, you remove the controls that were in place to govern male behavior. This is the reason why you see males sinking lower and lower and lower because there are no moral controls. You see that when they took prayer out of schools and then the new age came and the secret came and then all this information about religious religions being bullshit and Jesus ain't real. When you start taking that away because religions were created for men, not so much for women. It was created to control and govern men. Baby, when you gave the male the permission to remove religion, you also gave him the permission to remove morality. And freedom. Let me tell you all something about freedom. Freedom is for those who can self govern. Freedom is for those who can self govern. The male cannot govern his own behavior. So that's the systemic issue that they don't want to focus on. But in this systemic issue, it is because women were taught to submit to males and follow his quote unquote leadership. But when you follow the quote unquote leadership of the male who doesn't have the ability to self govern, this is how women end up with a bunch of kids. This is how women end up quote unquote, not choosing better because the system was set up for the woman to just have any old male beside her. She lost the ability to be discriminatory about who she would let into her body. This is where all of the dysfunction came from. And this is how you ended up with a whole bunch of kids or males on the planet. Okay. But none of them want to focus on this issue. The pick me or doesn't want to focus on the issue. The male doesn't want to focus on the issue because it all points back to male mentality and male behavior. And people do not want to submit to that reality. Right. Here goes another pick me who, whom I talked about earlier. Right. I've already talked about her before. Some of y'all ain't seen me talk about it yet, though. Let's demand things from our man that they systematically keep him from getting. So he can't give it to us. And so we married to the government. They take care of us like our man should. She's still on this at 172 years old. 172 years old. She's still on the same conversation. Let's rewind it. They made us demand things from our man that they systematically keep him from getting. Okay. Now, half truth, half truth. They make us demand to be given things by our man that they systematically keep him from getting. Half truth. Because she's talking in terms of materialism. First and foremost, when it comes to resources, resources were held within the power and control of women because women were given dominion over the planet. Mother Earth and Mother Nature was put in of the human mother, was put in the hands of the human mother, not no male. It's the first thing, right? That's the first thing. Secondly, here's where her truth comes in. At. They made women demand from men or black males things that they couldn't give him or that he couldn't do. Like 
provide and protect. That's not the nature of a man. That is not the nature of a male. He cannot do this. Because it ain't in his nature. So the woman began to demand that he do that and he can't do that. She began to demand that he help her with children and he can't because of the pressures of competing against other males and controlling his behavior and all of that stuff. So the male is virtually incapable, not because the woman is not quote unquote cooperating because the woman has cooperated to her own damn detriment too many times. And now she's leaving. She's standing up off the ground and she's getting her freedom and she's leaving. And the male being directly on top of her, standing on her back, he's the first one to fall to the ground. He's the first one to get hurt. When she stand up. He can't give it to us. And so we married to the government. They take care of us like our man should. First and foremost, let me tell you, first of all, the male ain't taking care of nobody. He can't even take care of his damn self, first off. But secondly, you must understand that the people in the government, they have high level esoteric occult wisdom behind them. They know who the true God is. They know all this stuff. So they understand that you have to take care of the feminine, the planet. You can't just totally neglect it, even though over time planet Earth is going to be null and void because they didn't suck so much out of it. But it takes time to get there. So they understand that you have to feed the feminine you have to support the feminine who the hell gonna take care of the kids so it ain't that the government is sustaining women it's that women have always been resource dependent which those resources came from mother earth they took those resources and made women depend on an artificial form of resources or the byproduct of mothers of mother nature's resources okay so they have to keep things in somewhat in accordance with nature. So them, those guys aren't quote unquote our man. They are the ones who set up this system intentionally the way that they did it. But they still have to keep things intact enough so it don't just destroy overnight. You should notice. Give us food, clothes, shelter, health care. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. They give us food, clothes, shelter, health care, child care. First and foremost, when everything was natural and women were a community before the nuclear family came into play. And this phallic, this phallic worship just really became full fledged on display. Before all of that, nature provided the food. When there were still female trees everywhere bearing fruit, nature provided that food. When the government came and destroyed that and took control over the planet and created artificial resources, controlled the food production and everything, then they had to sustain the woman through the artificial mechanisms that they created. Because if they would have left well enough alone, these women would have had food given to them by Mother Earth. So you cannot say that man provides food when it's planet Earth that did it. 
But when you come and destroy that, you become responsible for replacing what Mother Nature already had in play. So the government has to supply food. Clothing. People was making their own garments because they had free time and they weren't slaves. Right? So they were able to make their clothes and all of that stuff out of natural things. Same issue. Government came and controlled all that and created it into a monetary system that made them responsible for having to replace mother nature and start giving it to you. I'm trying to figure out why you don't understand this. Uh, Sherzad Ali. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out why you don't understand this shelter. People was building their own huts. People was building their own stuff until they came and took over mother nature earth and the land from the indigenous people they became responsible for providing what they took child care women have always had a support system up until up until they took women's support system away they were not dependent on men for none of this stuff None of it. But we try to make the woman out to be the aggressor. And who continues to make the woman into an aggressor? Other women who are deep, deeply poisoned by penis juice. education or department whatever it is we need they step in as our man and they only do that as I said for the two reasons to make him look inadequate and to make us not want to be bothered with him hold on hold on first of all he is inadequate it ain't about a look it he is inadequate and I'm so glad oh I can't wait to play this other video I can't wait to play this other video he is inadequate and that's the reason why women don't want to deal with him. It's not because he look inadequate. It's because he is. And he is by nature. It ain't the system in totality. Because let me tell you something. How this structure works. The bottom is where the biggest base is. The most, the majority of the people are on the bottom, right? The majority of people are on the bottom. And in this big wide space on the bottom is, are less controls. So as you go from the bottom like this, look at it. As you go from the bottom all the way up to the top. To create this pyramidal structure, you see the restriction, you see the energy becoming restricted the higher it gets. So it, it looks like that, right? Bam. Tighter controls going up this way, right? So the people at the bottom have less controls on them, allowing them to operate. In their ungoverned, uncontrolled nature that is not close to the morality at the top. It's more concentrated here at the top. So the people at the top are going to have tighter controls, okay, closer so it looks more intact. But the further you get down to the bottom, the more freely dispersed all this stuff, all these people are. And the more freely dispersed you are on the bottom means that you have no controls on your animalistic nature and that is more indicative of your raw self that can't be and how you would behave with no controls right so because black people are on the bottom 
you're gonna get more savage behavior in a system of white supremacy patriarchy right that has tighter controls going up so that's why it looks like people at the higher end of the socioeconomic totem pole that's the reason why it looks like they have their stuff more together they have less children because there are tighter controls as you go up and they are less controls as you go down so what am i saying i say all that to say that the male is more free than he believes himself to be he the government is not the males the black males problem the black male is his own problem because he's fighting the freedom of his raw internal nature that he's having a problem controlling and directing but instead of seeing that they want to try to see women as the problem who are on, who are underneath the feet of the black male. It's her problem. And he's standing on her neck and he still can't seem to go nowhere. He still can't seem to go up the ladder, even though he's standing on her back. To destroy his little ego that he got left. To destroy his little ego that he got left. To destroy his little ego that he got left. Which means that he's totally broken on the inside. Because of his inability to compete with the people at the top. With the male at the top. So he needs to stand on the neck of the woman to try to reach up to the top. And he still can't get there. So his whole his whole makeup is destroyed. His whole ego, everything about him is destroyed because of what? The system. But she wants to blame who? The woman. Women like this are used as a weapon, as a tool to cut other women down so that these guys can feed off of them. Women like, women like her are a detriment to women everywhere because she, she promotes violence. She promotes victimhood out of the male, which causes him to be more threatening. And she thinks this is okay. To make us think that we are better than him. And we Woo, 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 to make us think that we are better than him. Now she's inciting competition. When I just showed y'all the other day, or was it yesterday, that the male is that the male is predispositioned to compete with the women due to the conditioning that they must be more resilient and stronger than girls because of all of their wired in impediments. So they're in constant competition with women. And then here she goes inciting the competition, the competitive mentality of the male. This ladies, this right here, this, that's crap that they listening to. This is the reason why they say black women are the enemy. This is the reason why the black male is calling you an enemy to him because of the male identified woman who does not know the truth about the divine feminine does not know the truth because they are so concerned about protecting the male ego. They are so concerned about protecting the male ego that they will sacrifice anybody, anything who gets in the way of protecting the male ego. And the pick me is the number one front dog front runner tell him i can make it i don't know why you can't make it well i can make it i don't know why you can't make it wait a minute sherazad the male claims to be superior to the woman biologically divine by god if 
you are superior. Listen to me. If you are truly superior to the woman, it don't matter how bad you lose against the, another male. You supposed to easily be able to outdo the woman. Example. Example. Men are physically stronger than women. They are more athletic than women. All of this. Put the worst NBA team against the best WNBA team and you will still get a landslide victory. Listen to me. There's no argument there, is it? Take the worst NBA team and put them up against the best WNBA team and you will end up with a landslide victory for the worst NBA team. Because males are physically stronger. They have greater muscle mass, greater bone mass, right? They have greater athleticism because of these features. That's no argument. Even if they lose against the best NBA team. So if the man is truly superior to the woman, if the black male is truly superior to the black woman, then no matter how bad he gets his ass waxed by quote unquote white supremacy, he's supposed to still outperform the black woman by a landslide victory. But they can't. But they can't. So women who do better than the male after the male beats on his chest saying that he's superior to women, better than women, right? Now all of a sudden they take that as you think you better than me. Because you achieve and the woman don't have to say nothing. But if she do say something, she's warranted for saying it. I can do it. Why can't you? Because society has brainwashed her to believe that the male is superior. So since you are superior, if I can do it, why you can't do it? So that's legitimate. So instead, you want to blame the woman. I remember when a guy that I was dealing with kind of, it was like a half dealing with him and half not dealing with him type of situation. He had a business plan that he wanted me to put together. I put the business plan together and I was doing a lot of stuff. Y'all see how easy it is for me to gain attention, right? Easy it is for me to build relationships, right? So I put this business plan together and I was doing a lot of stuff and I was, attracting people to come help and all of this stuff. He was getting jealous of me doing all of this. And out of nowhere, he just say, you think you better than me because you see me accomplishing things and you're not doing what I'm doing. So now you're getting jealous of me and you want to project your own self hate off onto me. So basically this is what she's saying. And now black women thinking they better than them. Well, I can do what you can't No, This is how the male typically perceives a woman just doing her thing. This is how a male perceives a woman for just doing her thing because her shining her light and operating within her abilities shines a light on his deficiencies, which expose his cognitive dissonance because society, the government lied to him. Y'all need to understand that the government lied to men. They told them that if you do this, this, that, and the other, you can get this, this, that, and this. 
including women, and that women are not capable of doing this, that, and the other one. And then you look out into the world and you see something and you get different information that's opposite from what the government told you it would be. And that crap her in the mouth. If you if you can't get your your your, your ideas and she want to uh, act up or whatever, just pop her in the mouth. This, this, this was she, this is what Sherazad Ali told black men. So she incites violence as she's trying to protect the male's defeated ego because she the one who says the little ego he got left, letting you know that she want to put women on the chopping block to protect his goddamn own ego. And then tell them to pop them in the mouth because she understands that the male will get violence, violent. So her explanation, listen to me, her explanation for telling men to pop them in the mouth is that I know you're going to get violent. Just don't leave no marks on her. Don't be beaten on her. Just pop her in the mouth. So she understands that the male's diminished ego. Cognitive dissonance and the rise of testosterone will cause these men to unalive women, beat them, and she telling them just pop her in the mouth. As she's trying to protect his ego. This is what you get from women who are male identified. This is what you get. They made us demand things from our man that they systematically keep him from getting. So he can't give it to us. And so we married to the government. They take care of us like our man should. They give us food, clothes, shelter, health care, child care, education, an apartment. Whatever it is we need, they step in as our man. And they only do that, as I said, for the two reasons, to make him look inadequate and to make us not want to be bothered with him, to destroy his little ego that he got left. And to make us think that we are better than him. And we'll tell him, I can make it. I don't know why you can't make it. Well, you, you see, you see, you see the treasonous behavior. And males listen to that. And then they suck it. They, they, they suck on it. They suck on it. Fueling their hate and disgust for women who they believe are their enemy because of conversations like this do you understand this is this is this is really really dangerous this is very very dangerous rhetoric right let me pull up something else let's, let's pull up something else Okay, let's see. Okay. Let me let you hear this, miss. Because what you want me to say today is actually. Wants to hear this because what you want me to say today is actually being a single mother is totally possible. It actually isn't. Do you know that? It's not, it was never meant to happen for the human race, number one. Facts. Fact. It was never meant to happen. The nuclear family. Let me tell you something. The, the creation of the nuclear family creates the highest probability of a woman being a single mother. Because it separates her from family. It separates her from a support system, creating a high stake arrangement, a high risk re arrangement because the nature of a male. First of all, the nature of masculine energy is to keep moving. Masculine energy is a moving energy. The human body. OK, the male vessel on a on a physical, mental and spiritual plane. Gender works the same. The male on the physical plane represents the masculine vessel. Testosterone is the energy that keeps the male moving. 
So because the male has to move and that testosterone cuts off his ability, right? To be still, there is a high risk situation where the male could leave and just walk away from the government arranged family. He's being forced to stay against his will. He don't want these arrangements. He wants to keep moving. So creating a nuclear family situation creates a high risk situation for a woman to be single with no support or single mother. So you keep the extended family and the village intact and you reduce the likelihood of a woman not having support regardless if a male stays or goes. Number two, single biggest determiner of whether a mother is a good mother. What do you think of this? This is going to blow your mind when I tell you the answer. Whether they have a supportive partner. Whether they have a supportive partner. That's quote unquote success. This is a dangerous narrative to put out in the age of the male sinking to his lowest nature sinking to his lowest nature, needing to be validated. The nature of the woman is to operate within a community of women. And that would determine if she is successful. The community support, not of a quote unquote male partner. Who is, high, who is a high risk gambling situation, banking on whether he's going to leave or stay. And it's a 50-50 chance, not even a 50-50 chance. It's almost like a 90% 10 chance, depending on which environmental system or structure that you live in, in the hierarchy. Men need women and women need each other. Men need women and women need each other. But this narrative that she's pushing is to say that women need the male who she ends up having to take care of like an adult toddler, putting more pressure onto her. So that's not an in, that's not an indicator that a woman is successful just because the male is present. Do y'all remember? Ladies. Do y'all remember back in the day that when women was trying to beg men to be in their children's lives, lives, all they said is, all you have to do is be present. Like you ain't got to do nothing. You just need to be here so the child can see you. That was the, that was the requirement. Just be present for a man, right? And this is supposed to be an indicator of a mother being successful, even if she got a lazy parasite that's just present in the house. That's the, that's the indicator. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Because studies show you that these arrangements are detrimental to the health and welfare of a woman and women thrive when they are in community. And they're sharing these duties with each other. They thrive. They die horribly and have shorter lifespans and illnesses when they take on this quote unquote nuclear family partner idea arrangement that as you get to the top, the more controls they have in place to keep them appearing to be stable. Because what are some of these controls? Ladies, think about it. When you go up the pyramid and you go up the echelon, what are some of these controls that are keeping the quote unquote nuclear family in play, in place? Trust funds. Trust funds. Stock portfolios. Right. Business. Business. Wills. They have tight 
controls, financial controls, wills, and legalities that keep these quote unquote nuclear families intact. The lower you go down, the less controls that you have to keep these things intact. See, white people who have wealth and money, they can control their children's choice in mate by threatening to take them off the wheel if they don't marry who they want them to marry. They have the ability to threaten to remove people from the trust fund. Those are artificial controls that keep things intact. And those controls disappear the further you go down the pyramid. So that means the more freedom that the male has to stay or go because he don't have nothing controlling his behavior. He has no controls on his behavior. So black people trying to live up to the nuclear family ideal on the bottom end of the echelon is a losing battle because the male has no controls making him stay and neither does the woman except psychologically so the the major argument for good dads is actually can the dad be there for the mom the the argument is can the dad be there for the mom giving a male freedom of choice and whether he's going to roll on his biology or roll on morality becomes a losing battle the further you go down on the socioeconomic totem pole. Can the father be there for the mother if he has a stake in the will versus the black male having no stake in nothing? Who's more likely to leave and just go with the flow of their nature? The black male. So these statistics do not consider. They do not consider. Each demographic. They do not consider the nature of the male. They do not consider these artificial controls. The nuclear family or a family, quote unquote, sticking together with the male. That is just simply not nature. It's simply not nature. It's not the path of least resistance. Because it's like a, a direct uh, chain is what we see. Um, what you see is that if you've got a, a father figure, basically, who's supportive to the mother, the mother's energy goes towards the children. But the second that she. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got I need you to go back. Damn. I hate this thing. Don't have no rewind button like that. If the father is supportive of the mother, listen, listen to me. If the father is supportive of the mother, then the mother's energy goes more to the children. But if the father is not supportive, then the mother loses all of that energy and she can't take care of the children well enough. So if that's the reality, which she's saying is the reality, then why are we still trying to push a nuclear family dynamic when nuclear family structure is this damn fragile because it depends on the male's choice to act in moral character. It depends on the male's choice to be responsible, empathetic leader, which we understand that the male's 
that testosterone impacts their empathy? Why are we still pushing nuclear family with the understanding of these dynamics? You base the whole damn thing on male choice. And without controls, what is the male's choice? Stick and move. Stick and move. Let's rewind. This because what you want me to say today is actually being a single mother is totally possible. It actually isn't. Do you know that? It's not, it was never meant to happen for the human race, number one. Number two, single biggest determiner of whether a mother is a good mother, what do you think of this? This is going to blow your mind when I tell you the answer. Whether they have a supportive partner. So the, the major argument for good dads is actually, can the dad be there for the mom? Because it's like a, a direct uh, chain is what we see. Um, what you see is that if you've got a, a father figure, basically, who's supportive to the mother, the mother's energy goes towards the children. But the second that she doesn't have that supportive energy, she collapses, is what happens. And then the kids get starved. And we're not actually supposed to be living in a single family household, so it's supposed to be a lot more support towards mom than just dad. Just, nobody wants to hear this, because what you want me to do is There's supposed to be a lot more support in the house than just dads. Why did they, whoever did this, why did they cut it off right there? What else did this woman say? Because basically what I'm getting from it, when she says, a lot goes towards the dads if they're supportive, but at the end they cut it off and saying the woman's supposed to have most support and then boom, they cut it off. So whoever did this wanted to push the narrative that she was pushing a nuclear family structure. But based on that last sentence tells me that she was not pushing a nuclear family structure. What kind of structure is she pushing? Because the male was not created to be in the house with the woman. Because his nature is not fit for that. Energy must flow. Energy cannot be stagnant or stale because if you block energy or you restrict energy, you create problems. So this is how depression, anger, and all of that stuff and rage turn into violence because people build up these emotions and they don't release them. Well, the male has a lot of issues with himself. One, testosterone, right? If the male is not getting enough sex to release the effects of testosterone or the energy of testosterone to let his body flow, right? That stuff builds up. Then the male already has issues with communication. He can't even tell you how he feel. He don't even know how he feels. And some of, a lot of these guys clam up and they restrict energy there. The male has to expel that energy through some physical activity. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Listen, cortisol is released during stressful times. Did you know that cortisol is needed to counter the effects of testosterone when testosterone inhibits the male's con emotional control center? When the emotional control center is no longer operating because testosterone and practically cut it off, the stress hormone cortisol is responsible for counteracting the effects of testosterone. So the male needs to be put in a environment that allows him to have stress to, to expel that energy. If you keep him in the house, that energy ends up getting expelled on the woman and the children. 
So the male was not created to be in the house. Therefore, who could she be saying needs to be the extra support? Other women. Other women. But with so much hate for the feminine, women do not like or respect other women because they worship the phallus. It's phallic worship. This is the issues that we are dealing with with these women out here. The narratives, the philosophies, all of this have altered the behavioral patterns of women. It has altered the psychology of a woman. So much so that women do not know how to function like women anymore. They're males in the mind. They are competitive. They are dominant. They are all of these things that men are in the most negative ways. Women should not be competing with other women, but they are. And what are they competing for? The male gaze. The male's attention, the same attention, the attention of a person who has been shown to be biologically and mentally inferior to the woman. She's looking for his validation. Just like I said before, it's like walking out of the, it's like walking out of the Gucci store. With a brand new Gucci outfit on. And feeling like you don't look good at all. Until you go take the pile of shit that's on the corner. And go pick it up and then wipe it on your suit. And now you feel like you look the best. Now that you done wiped a, a, a hunk of shit on your shoulder. Right? Hmm. Ooh, shoot. Oh. Man, I, wish I would look good in this outfit. If only I had some shit to spread on it. Literally. Oh, there's some shit on the corner. Shit. Now, nah, I'm gorgeous. That's what, that's what it's like getting validation from men. Picking up a pile of dog shit on the corner and spreading it on your Louis Vuitton purse. Brand new off the factory. At, at, the, at, the, at the factory. Spreading it on your clothes like it's perfume. That's what, that's what getting male validation is like. And women do it all the time. And they backstab each other for it. Let's see what we got. I had a few things saved that I really wanted to, to talk to y'all about. Right? Listen to this. If you ever come across a girl that do what I'm about to tell you, keep her around. So look, I'm on a date with this girl. And bro, up until this point, we had been on two dates already. Third date come and she offered to pay. I'm like, oh, for sure. I appreciate that. I already gave her some brownie points for that because she reciprocated. She showed me that she isn't selfish. So look, it's time to pay. She get her card out, but she handed it to me as if I'm paying. I said, oh, yeah, bruh, this one of them ones right here. See, a lot of girls, anytime that they can exercise power over you, they're going to jump at that opportunity. But see, this girl here, she didn't have that kind of ego. She found joy in just treating me. She allowed me to look like the man, bro. She handed me her card as if I was paying. Anytime you find a girl that allow you to be the man and make you look good in front of other people. Yeah, bro, she one of them ones. Reward her for that because that's the kind of behavior we want to continue. If you ever. These dudes have no shame. They, I'm telling you. Where my book at? Where my book at? <laughs> I'm telling you. They ain't got no shame in their game. I mean not none. Not am. And they get, they get on here. They get on here. And make and tell everybody. Everybody. That. They tell everybody. That they ain't got shit going for themselves and that they need help looking like the man. Right? They need help looking like the man. See? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. 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 Let me
Let's break his stuff down and then we're going to read this book real quick. Look at this. Look, look, look at this. Let's, let's, let's play this Dusty again. I will come across a girl that do what I'm about to tell you. Keep her around. So look, I'm on a date with this girl. And bro, up until this point, we had been on two dates already. Third date come and she offered to pay. Like, oh, for sure. I appreciate that. I already gave her some brownie points for that because she reciprocated. Stop. Stop right there. I already gave her some brownie points because she reciprocated. Because he's looking for a transactional relationship, right? Transactional. Brownie points. She showed me that she isn't selfish. So look, it's time to pay. She get her card out, but she handed it to me as if I'm paying. I whoa, 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 whoa. She must thought you was broke. No, 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 no. You ain't just gonna skate by that, sir. I know good and damn well you not just gonna skate by that because if you pay for the first date, my question is, was you struggling? Did she sense that you were struggling or something? Something had to make her think that you was a charity case. Some had to make her think that you was a charity case. You did something to make her think you was a charity case. So now on the second date, she slides you her card so that you can look like and feel like the man. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, I got you. I got you, baby. Don't worry about it. I said, oh, yeah, bro. This is one of them ones right here. See, a lot of girls, anytime that they can exercise power over you, they're going to jump at that opportunity. But see, this girl here, she didn't have that kind of ego. She found joy in just treating me. She allowed me to look like the man, bro. She allowed me to look like the man. They want to look like the man. But they don't want to be the man. She handed me her card as if I was paying. Anytime you find a girl that allow you to be the man and make you look good in front of other people. And to make you look good in front of other people because you can't look good on your own. Because you can't look good on your own. Okay. Yeah, bro. She one of them ones. Reward her for that. Reward her for that. Like she a dog turning tricks. Ma'am, let me tell you something. If your ass is out here handing these niggas your card so that they can look and feel like King Kong just so they can reward you, I want you to understand you are a Pavlov dog. You up here turning tricks. Girl, tricks is for kids. Look what I can do. Look, look, baby, I'm so feminine. I'm so feminine. I'm going to hand you my card. Shh. Look like the man. Baby, that's a trick. You turning tricks for a handicap, motherfucker. Ha handicap. And he just so proud to sit up here and look like Boo Boo the Fool for letting a woman slide him his card so he can, so he can feel better. Huh. When, listen, ladies. Uh... Why men love bitches? Why men love bitches? So, ladies, you're going to have to be the dumb fox. Now, this, this lesson that we was just on, this is lesson number 25. Okay. So, last week, we talked about how to handle the men with kid gloves. Okay. Because they got weak ass egos okay and girl they need to be stroked and let me show you the easiest way to stroke a girl first and foremost you got to make him think he right don't argue with him don't fight don't do none of that shit okay so today in our example this woman followed our instructions to the t she 
went out to eat with him and then she slid him her card so he could look like the man so i am so glad that this this is happening so um the dumb fox typically handles his ego with kid gloves okay so if you if you want him to turn right you know try to give a man directions and and girl they just don't listen to you at all because uh if you tell him to turn right in his mind he is better at directions and instructions than you. So don't tell him to turn the way that he should supposed to turn. Tell him to turn the opposite way because he going to do the opposite of what you say because you are a dumb fox. OK, so if you want him to turn right, tell him, mm, I think it might be to lift. In a man's mind, his navigational skills is always most superior to a woman. So it's all about his ego, which he has no direction and no line of rotation, girl. Look. So the three words that can guarantee to turn any man on is you are right. You'll never convince him otherwise. So, girl, don't even bother. Let him be right. Let him be. Let him be right. And you be smart. So let me tell you a couple of other things that you can do to make him feel good. In the same example where this woman had gave him her card. Now, you can do things just like she did. OK, let me show you. So this is how you stroke his ego, girl. Now, if you walk in your dog at dusk, ask him to come with you because you want him to keep you safe. Now, it ain't shit outside, girl. Y'all live in a nice ass neighborhood and you don't even hear no crickets at night. Ain't nobody out there, but make him think that a robber is coming to get you so he can feel like the man. Listen, ladies, these motherfuckers don't want to be men. They just want to feel like it. So you got to play on his emotions, honey. Girl, you got to play on his emotions. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, here's here's one of my favorite ones. So if y'all go to a scary movie, girl, let me tell you something. You better hang on to him tightly. And if there's violence, if there's any violence in the scary movie, what I need you to do is cover your eyes and let him tell you it's over. Kind of like... Ola Ray, kind of like Ola Ray when they was in Thriller. You remember when they was in Thriller and 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 Michael was like, something I want to tell you. What is it, Michael? I'm different. I know, Michael. That's why I love you. No, I mean I'm different. What are you talking about? <laughs> She was standing there for a long time before she wait. You know, the movie where she waited until the motherfucker turned into a werewolf and then she ran. Yeah, that thriller where Ola Ray just, I can't take this anymore. I, I got to go. And then Michael came out to save the day to protect her. This is exactly what you need to do. That's the perfect example. So listen. Instead of moving, instead of running out of the, 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 the movie theater like Ola Ray did, girl, just sit there and cover your eyes and let him save the day, okay? That's one of my favorite ones, <clears throat> okay? Now, look. <sighs> Handling his ego, girl, with kid gloves is so easy. It's learning your ABCs. It's easy as learning your ABCs. Like, you remember when Michael was real little, he was a kid, girl, when Michael was black and normal, girl, he was my favorite then. But anyway, you remember that song? A, B, C. It's the easiest. One, two, three. I say, baby, do, re, me. A, B, C. One, two, three. Baby, you and me, girl. That one. Girl, yes. Listen. Handling his ego with kid gloves is the easy way, like learning your ABCs. Listen. When her child brings home a crayon drawing from kindergarten no matter how ugly it is girl is a mother gonna criticize it girl you better not criticize your little four-year-old pencil drawing and them colors that she drew outside the lines you don't hurt your baby ego like that mm -mm. just tell your baby it's a masterpiece so then the child will think it's a masterpiece and keep on drawing picasso like he picasso listen men are the same way they are children so even if he do some shit wrong Girl, just go fix it behind his back and then tell him he did a good job, right? And so the lady in this video who slid him her card, she played the dumb fox perfectly. Mwah. Spectacular. See, we're going to have to do some more of these educational meetings like this because 
uh, as as a woman, as a woman, you got to understand how to do this. Now, attraction principle number 36. The token power position is for public display. Now, this is what we want to get to because this 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 is the tactic that that she pulled. The, the, that's this. I want y'all to hear it again. No, because we can't rewind it like that. But this is the tactic she pulled and it works so well. Give her a round of applause. Give her a round of applause. Good job, ladies. Anyway, the token power position is for public display. But the true power position is for private viewing only. And this is the only one that matters. So for all ego intensive purposes, help him look manly in front of other people. And the lady in our example right here, she did that spot on. She helped him look manly and look how happy this nigga was. Girl, this motherfucker is happier than a pick me with a bag of dicks. Listen, they used to say back in the 90s, happier than a sissy with a bag of dicks. But these days, it's kind of different. The pick me's really be chasing that dick and they really be happy happier than them sisters they be much more happier than them sisters with the bag of dick so the new saying is girl these this motherfucker was happier than to pick me with a bag of dicks um yeah <clears throat> so let's 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 listen to him one more time You heard him say it. You heard him say You heard him say it. So you know that my book is on point, girl, because he's just, he just said it out of his own mouth. I didn't have to say it for him. Girl, just read my book and you'll get all the answers that you want. Look, so for all ego intensive, intensive purposes, help him look manly in front of other people. Girl, they eat that shit up. It ain't even real. You got to lie to these motherfuckers. You got to keep them in la la land. Don't worry about this token position because you run the house. Let him think he the man. Okay. Let him look good in front of other people. Right. Let him open doors and let him address the hostess at the restaurant. Johnson party of four. This is just a token power position, which is totally meaningless. Okay. But to the man, it is real. To the man, it say everything. And that's how you handle kids. Kids don't know no better, girl. Stop acting like these motherfuckers is on your level. Girl, they is not on your level. And you take this shit too goddamn seriously. Sitting up here wasting your damn energy trying to reason with these retarded motherfuckers when they ain't nothing but three-year-olds. Girl, pretend. These motherfuckers like playing make-believe. Play make-believe right along with them. Shit. How many times I gotta tell you? Anyway, um, this is just the token power position, and that is totally meaningless. Look, when you are truly running the show, you do not need to tip your hand or flaunt it. If he is treating like treating you like you his dream girl, you have all the power you need. Remember, feminine strength is equally as powerful. It's poetic justice. Men control the world, but men, but women control the men. Women control the men only if you know what you're doing. Because some of y'all bitches don't even know what y'all be doing. Mad and just be screaming and trying to get your point across. Ain't listen to shit I done said in this book. You just laughing. Right. And then get off of here and act like I ain't told you shit. And go back home to your little animal and your little pet and still be trying to talk to this motherfucker. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. 
Look, we'll 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 continue some more of this later. Mm, yeah. We'll 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 look at that some more later. I just want y'all to understand. I want y'all to understand that you are dealing with elementary people, okay? And people who are ego driven. And that when they're deficient, that they will use other people as weapons to get at you. Okay. So you got a lot of stuff going on here with the male and the female mentality. Okay. Women are the true power source. The male wants to pretend he's the power source. And then the female who is actually the power source misappropriates her power by supporting male causes. Destroying other women. You cannot support life when you destroy. So as you can hear it coming out the male's own mouth, all they care about is resources and feeling good about themselves. That's it. At other people's expense. You the one because you sacrifice for him. You're the one because you sacrifice for him. Let's see. I want I want to hear y'all's opinions. I want to hear y'all's opinions about these pick me's. Right. Call me. Call me. 832-627-6575. Call me. Call me. OK, we got 851 people in here. Can you get the likes up a little bit more? Right. Let me know what's going on. Right. Because these people. These people are retarded, right? I keep telling you they retarded. I don't know how long I'm going to have to keep telling you they retarded. But they are. And, and then the woman thinks she got herself a prize. She thinks she got her a prize because this sucker here is so happy that she made him look good by sliding her his card. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just taken aback by that. Let's look. While we waiting on people, oh, here we go. Oh, hold on. Hello, who am I speaking with? Hi, my name is Bree. Hey, Bree, what you got for me tonight? Oh my God, I I can't even I can't I don't even know where to start. I'm gonna keep it short. Um, just the same old thing like everybody I know. Like, thank you so much. You're brilliant. You're amazing. I can't even believe you exist, but I'm also super relieved you exist. <laughs> like, thank the Lord. Um, and I'm, I'm actually older than you. I'm 40, and I can't even believe that you are so just aware and wise. Like, you're saying so many things that I've been, like, you talk about your 45 year journey, like, I've been on this whole journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like that, for real. Um, but I also, <clears throat> I wanted to, um, I'm nervous. <laughs> no problem. I wanted to, um, I wanted to ask you about, uh, there's two people that I have followed. Um, I was in the comments and I was like, you follow the ops, like you study the ops and that's important. And I appreciate that because I do the same thing. Uh -huh. And there's um, these two guys and I wonder if you would cover them too. Um, because I saw that you had covered Stephen Crowder and <clears throat> there's a dude in his circle. You kind of, you kind of, go, you kind of going in and out. I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me see if I go across the room. Um, did you catch that about Stephen Crowder? Okay, I, I you you said that I, I went over Stephen Crowder. I didn't hear the rest of it. Yeah, so there's a guy in his circle um, who is wild, and he's a content creator. He came from he was a comedian. Um, he's been on like Joe Rogan, but he goes off. And he's like kind of the polar opposite end uh -huh. of the stuff you're talking about, but he's like pandering to the red, not just the red pill, but the white supremacist red pill. Uh -huh. Even though he's kind of like not that, I don't believe he really is that, but that's the audience that he caters to, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And he just like encourages a lot of kind of oppressive thinking when it comes to women's role, but the way he talks about it is the same way you said, like he has a wife, he has, uh, they have four kids, back to back to back, they have four kids, 
he talks about how, like, you know, she's such a great wife, and my four kids, and she does all this stuff. Like, they have this homestead that he decided to buy. It's like a whole deal, but, yeah, he's a lot. <laughs> and then there's this other guy, um, Sean Adams. He's, like, into this poly thing, uh-huh. and he has these women that he makes call, call him to. They go live all the time, too. And it's just, like, promoting these, you know, really oppressive ideas. And with, with Sean, his audience is mostly women, young women. And it's just wild. Like, the the way you are, I just think that it would be amazing to clash those worlds. And, like, are you ever going to just be hip to this, that this is out here, too, that, you know, like, as far as the women in the male center, male identified women and stuff, uh-huh. Yeah, but, you know, it's a whole rabbit hole, and I know you already know, but I just wanted to, you know, call and, and show you some love, um, and I wonder if maybe I can ask you a question, and then I'll let you go, and, like, if you want to answer that question, and, uh-huh. you know what I mean, um, I don't want to take up too much of your show, but I'll, I'll call, like, I usually am not enough to sleep, but I'll call back any time to yeah yeah because i'm ha- just, yeah because i'm great I, thank you so much i'm having i'm having a real <laughs> difficult time understanding you because your phone is is not is going in and out so i'm really having a hard time listening okay. yeah so if you can call back okay. at a later time when you can get mm-hmm. some, yeah okay did you so you didn't catch any of it I'm I, I know i, I catch and i turned the show down so i'm gonna echo. no i'm 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 i'm, uh-huh. I'm, I'm catching some of it but your 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 vocals are going in and out going up and down and it's really hard um, when if you and when you play it back you'll hear what what, what i'm talking about so uh you just got to okay. hear it yourself so that you can uh yeah. work on it all right all right okay thank, well, thank you. you so much you all all right all right Mm-hmm. Hello. Hello, who's speaking? Uh, Nairi. How you doing, Nairi? I'm good, how are you? I'm excellent. What you got for me tonight? I uh, just wanted to chime in. I was going to um, pretty much um, uh, pretty much just like so back in the day, you know, men always came they didn't come empty handed. They always had to come with something when they came to the woman whatever happened to that or is that just like an old school thing and and, and the you know the new well here's, you know, the here's, new, here's the thing mm-hmm. men coming with something is not their nature men come to take mm, the only reason right. why men ever came with Mr. something Peter. is because mm. society was set up in the rules and the the morality okay, was established so. Was the morality was established. Let me tell you something. Morality is a byproduct of philosophy. So depending mm-hmm. on the philosophies that depending on the philosophies that are created mm-hmm. will determine what morality system people operate on. The morality mm-hmm. is un the hold on. The uh, morality is unnatural. Okay, so since the morality is unnatural and we've already gone through the process of ideological subversion, demoralization Mm -hmm. happened a long time ago. They took the philosophies away, which also Mm -hmm. took the morality away with it. Right. So males are Mm -hmm. operating without a moral compass. And they're operating in their raw nature, and their raw nature is to take, not to give. Okay. So, okay. Damn, I have a question right behind that. Yeah, because when you, okay. Because, so, so when you say that we're, um, that we're, um, like, enabling them or what have you, I see what you're saying because you said when we demoralize them that it causes them. No. What what were you saying in regards to that? Okay. Listen Mm -hmm. to me. Listen to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right. And try to hold the mm mm-hmms and all of that because it's really loud in my ear. Just listen. Again, at the top of the pyramid is where leadership leaders are at the top of the pyramid. Every every organization, no matter what it is, it either it thrives or fails based on the leadership. Okay, Mm -hmm. so the leaders are in control. They are the ones that create the policies. They're the ones that create the procedures and tell the people how to operate on the bottom. The people on the bottom just do what the people at the top say do. They pass down the rules that the people operate on. So in terms of society, the people at the top, which are the leaders, they create the philosophies or the philosophical practices that the people on the bottom will abide by. As a result of the philosophies created, a byproduct is created from the philosophy and that byproduct is called morality. What is right and what is wrong to do, how you should behave and how you should act go hand in hand with the philosophical practice. When people operate like this, they do as they're told and try to live up to the moral standards that are created based on the philosophy. Religion is a philosophy. Religious practices have a moral code that goes with it. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not steal. Blah, blah, blah. All of that. That is a result of religious philosophy that tells a person what's right and wrong and how to behave. When you remove the philosophy, this is the process of demoralization. Remove the philosophy, like taking prayer out of schools, okay? Saying that religion is poisonous, okay? That is part of removing or demoralizing the people. When you remove the philosophy, you remove the morality that went along with it. Now people can just do as they please in accordance with, in accordance with their nature. So when they don't have moral controls, they act in their nature. So what you're seeing is men acting in their ungoverned and uncontrolled nature. The mask that they were wearing is no longer on their face. The uniform that they were wearing to deceive you is no longer on their body. You see a raw beast and how the raw beast acts when there are no laws, no rules, no controls, no moral practices, right? This is the reason why the male is out of control. This is the reason why he ain't doing what they quote unquote did in the past because there is no moral standard to force him or make him do it. It's a free okay. for all. Mm-hmm. Got you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. I I, you're very welcome. You're welcome. Great, wonderful day. You too. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Hello, this is Princella speaking. Who am I speaking with? This is Rashonda. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm fantastic. What you got for me tonight? Um I wanted to talk about the topic. Um what I've been seeing is like a pattern. Um with with the men, you know. Uh oh. What the hell? I don't know what the hell happened right there. Thank her. Oh, hung up. Okay. 
Hello? Hello, this is Prince Ella speaking. Who am I speaking with? Oh, you called me back, mama. We talked okay, to someone. Okay, all right. I thought I just... Got that one there. Hello? Hello, this is Prince Ella speaking. Who am I speaking with? Malika Vasquez. Hello, how you doing? What you got for me tonight? Well, I was um, I was just kind of um, thinking about what you were talking about, and I was like, when you're arguing with a man, it is so hard to argue with them because they want to always talk about facts and logic and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, I know I'm just kind of just talking, but um, it's really hard because it's like I think as women we totally think different because we use our whole entire brain. So I, so one of the things like I was thinking about, I was trying to explain to my brother, I was like, women use their whole entire brain, and um, and I was saying to him about like Hume's fork about how nothing is really actually, you know, it's just like a series of things, like cause and an effect. I'm sorry, I'm really nervous. So, but I was explaining that to him, and it's like, it's hard because men think so much differently. Like, I'm, like they think black and white, and I think that's part of where the um, disconnect comes in with them. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the, um, and so when you're just talking to the other lady, I was like, oh, I totally thought about that. So I just... That, that was pretty much just my comment, like, you know, how differently men and women think, like, um, you know, that's it. Yeah. Sorry. No, no problem. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Hello. Hello, this is Prince Ella speaking. Who am I speaking with? Susan again. How are you doing, Susan? What you got for me? I'm doing well. Um, I just wanted to tell you, like, it's so, it, it's mind-blowing how insightful you are and how you can kind of string, like, you would never think to put all this stuff together. Like, you see it, but then you don't really think about it until, like, you explain it. It was just amazing tonight. I really appreciate your show. Thank you so and, much. I did have a question for you. It's kind of odd. It's like I was watching this show called like I think it, Mean Girl Murders or something like that, mm -hmm. and it's about like women who murder. Mm -hmm. And like it was really weird to me. Actually, not really weird. It made sense. The one thing that all of these cases had in common was just men. Like they did all this crazy stuff for dudes that didn't even like a lot of them didn't even stick around after they did it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if people ever use that argument that women commit crimes too. But it seems like the ones that I saw like. It's because of men, so it's always because of a man. It's always because of a man, really. No, a, a no good woman will always have a no good man right behind her, right? Yes, but I every, behind every successful man is a woman. Ain't that something else that tells you who's actually the leader, who's in control, because behind every no good woman it's a no good man that made her that way. But behind every successful man, it's a woman there. So women have been contaminated due to men and with women worshiping men and trying to be just like men, you get a negative recourse throughout the entire globe. That's why this work that I'm doing is so important because it pulls women out of the abyss and it helps train women on how to be women again. Women do not know how to be women. And I'm, I'm saying this because it's, it's been proven. They took, they did a psychological study on, um, a pig I think no it was a dog right put them in a group of pigs never showed him his face right so he grew up thinking he was a pig because he kept, all he saw was pigs and then eventually they put a mirror in his face and he tried to attack the mirror right wow tried to attack the mirror so the whole the whole i the whole thing is is that people can be manipulated to forget who they are when the when when john calhoun did the rat utopia experiment 
What he found out is that once he took the mice out of their natural habitat, after a while of being in this artificial utopia, the mice forgot how to be mice. They didn't know how to be mice anymore, right? So the whole thing that I'm trying to get women to understand is you've been indoctrinated with male philosophies. Capitalism comes out of the nature of a male because it's, it's about resource hoarding and uh, competition, both of which comes from the nature of a male, right? Um, dominance, right? Crushing another, uh, another person, right? All of that stuff comes out of the nature of a male. So by women operating under patriarchal philosophies and economic philosophies, they have been driven to a state of male behavior so far that to the point that they don't know how to think like women. They don't know how to have a circular mentality. They're two dimensional black, white, this or that up or down. Right. That's masculine two dimensional thinking. Women do not how, know how to be 360 thinkers anymore. They don't know how to be 360 um, livers anymore. They don't know how to live 360. So women have to be re retrained. Right. They have to be yeah, broken so and re fine. they have to be broken and rebuilt. Women are just totally clueless at this point in time. Right. And it happens to any species. And all you have to do is keep women unconscious because the nature of uh, study in life is all living things will respond to environmental stimuli. stimuli. It's an unconscious behavioral pattern. So keep women unconscious and keep allowing them to adapt to their environments. And you'll never they'll never they'll they'll continue to be destructive in order to stop the destruction held by women or caused by women, women have to be awakened consciously to their behavioral patterns and shown why they're making the decisions and choices that they're making in everyday life. Did you, was it you that had the, um, the show about the, I think it was some kind of monkey where uh, the, most of the males got some kind of bad meat and they died out. And like most of the aggression died out when the males died. The first person I saw dude say that was this white girl on TikTok, but I, I didn't see it on TikTok. I saw it posted somewhere on uh, YouTube. So I, apparently that study is going uh, viral too. Okay, um, which happens, which happens in you know in animal kingdoms all the time because at the end of the day, that's a response to stimuli, right? And mm -hmm. but the only way that that can happen is by females truly being in control right yep. females being in control the human female has to be the dumbest of all the primates or all of the animals and the reason why because she's been taken out of her natural environment and the woman don't know what's real and what's real or natural anymore she's a total artificial creation due to an art due to the adaptation of an artificial environment Women are disconnected from their intuition. They don't even know how to read their intuition at all. They do not know how to read their fear. They have been, oh, yeah. yeah, they have been totally indoctrinated to go against their natural biological patterns. Right? Well, the same thing, like the people are voting in people that intentionally like take away their rights and stuff like I still can't fathom how people like knowingly put people in place that are just going to doom them to like horrible, you know, fates. I'm going to tell you, I, I don't know. Let, 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 let me tell let, let me tell you how that happened. I'm going to tell you how that happened. And I got to answer the next call. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Look, I ran across a Facebook post the other day or yesterday. And let me pull it up. Cause I, I, I I want y'all to see the post that I ran across. I want y'all to see it for yourself because, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe y'all will believe it and maybe, maybe you won't, but I just want you to understand, um, that ain't no reason. In, there is, there's no reasoning with these people. I, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the answer to your question in another way. Okay. I'm going to just, I, I'm going to just ask you as soon as I pull it up. Doggone shame. Mm-hmm. Let's 
question. But I did also want to say that I'm really proud of you, and I'm pretty sure you're going to go, like, really far places. Like, there's nobody else like you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Let's see. I got to, I really want to, I hope they ain't buried. I hope they haven't buried this, this post, because I made this post uh, the other day or, or yesterday. Uh I sure hate having to, to scroll and look for stuff. Okay. Damn, this shit just. Oh, uh, okay. So I really. Okay, so they put they they made a post on Facebook. It was a question. Okay, and the question was, what time is closest to twelve a.m. <laughs> What time is closest to 12 a.m.? And the answer choices were 11 a.m., I mean 11.55 a.m., 12.03 a.m., uh, 9.57 a.m., and 10, uh, 10.30 a.m. or some, some other two answers. So... A was 11.55 a.m. And D was 12.03 a.m. Do you know that the majority of people who answered that question said that 11.55 a.m. was closest to 12.03 a.m.? Now, this is important because that's real basic. 12.03 a.m. is midnight. It's three minutes past midnight, which would make that the closest to 12 a.m. 11.55 a.m. is closest to 12 p.m. But everybody or the majority of people kept saying that 11 a.m. was the closest time to 12 a.m. If we cannot come to the conclusion that 11.55 a.m. is closest to noon and not midnight, ain't no way on God's green earth are you going to get people to comprehend politics. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's the answer to your question, though. I'm just trying to let you know. I get you. That's, that is true. That scared me. I'm like, I hope they're on military time and just confused about counting or something like that. No, they just dumb. I can't dumb. explain that one. They just <laughs> dumb. And so now you confuse why dumb people can't comprehend more intelligent stuff. Ain't nothing to be confused about. Because they went on the college campus and asked people, what's July 4th, 1776? And motherfuckers don't even know. Yet, they pop oh. fireworks every goddamn year. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I'm sorry if I took too much time. I appreciate you answering my phone call. No problem. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Right, bye bye. You are. I'm sorry that the people, I'm sorry that the people dumb, y'all. I'm sorry that they dumb. But ain't nothing you can do for them. Nothing. No thing that you can do for them. Hello, this is Amber. Hey, Amber, this is Prince Ellis speaking. Who am I speaking with? Uh, you're speaking with Amber Rodriguez from Washington. All right, Miss Washington. Oh, hold on. I think it's a, it's an echo in the back. Okay. Okay, yeah, let me put, I've been trying to... I, okay, I'm on two phones because I've watched you on my phone all this whole night. Mm -hmm. And I had to use my son's phone. Is this better? Yes. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. No, I still hear it. Is it better now? Um, no. Okay. Um, I'll just turn off the phone. Yeah. Turn off my phone. Okay. 
So can I ask you my question? Sure. Okay. So my question is, okay, I for those people out there that were kind of trying to follow feminism, which you end up finding out is white feminism, and um, then you come into this trying to make sense of all of this, and maybe you do want a relationship and you want children, what is your advice to women that feel like they want, you know, maybe even men that kind of know they have this problem and they're trying to put that in the hands of a woman like me and say, hey, I don't know what to do, but I'm willing to work on this. What is your advice to people like that? Well, that's why I have the... Uh, I don't know, you might be in a... Uh, a place where it's bouncing off the wall because it's really bad echo. Okay, is it better here now? Different room? Uh, no. Just just hang up and call back and let's see if it... Okay, I can try. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know when number I just called. Let's see. Let's try it again. I don't know if I don't I don't know if that's the number I, I just called. It's the speaker on the phone. I wanted to call you on my second phone. Oh okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so here's the thing. What she should do is read the 41 Shades of Men. The answer I've already given women. I didn't gave you the whole game. Hold on. Hello. Hello. Is that better? Oh, a whole lot better. Okay. Okay. So the the answer to your question is, have you, well, first, have you read my 41 Shades of Men? I literally just saw you on that show that was replaying, or actually they didn't replay. They didn't even mention it. No, I don't even know. I've been binge watching you for the last three, two to two, two to three days. And so I know I'm new to it. I'm about to subscribe and, and look into all. I think you have two books. Yes. Yes. Okay. I would recommend that you read that book first because okay. after you read that book, then you'll have a better answer to your question because it's going at the end of the day, it's going to boil down to, am I having a child because I want one and I'm ready. I'm, I have my own support network that I'm ready to and prepared to handle this child with myself and my um, support system, or are you willing to risk, play a risk game that is not going to yield very big rewards? You'll find that out once you start reading the book. And then I think you'll probably come back with a different question. Got it, which I already could tell by the nature and yeah, and the, and the patterns that we see. Um, that I already know the answer to that question. Okay. All right. Thank but I will definitely get your book, though. Thank you so much for everything you do. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. Okie dokie. You can tell by the Hello. Hello, this is Princella speaking. Who am I speaking with? Hi. Um, this is Paris. Hey Paris, what you got for me tonight? Um, I wanted to add to your pick me topic that you were speaking on earlier. Mm hmm Um, and you asked the question, what do we think about the pick me? Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're very dangerous. Mm hmm I can't have them around me. 
because I've been attacked by too many of them. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I feel like we're oversaturated with them. Um, um, this is an attack, but because we were programmed to be male identified, it's so many around us. It's hard for me to find like a real genuine friend who isn't in competition with me. Mm -hmm. And it also happens on the workplace as well. Like anytime I've had a job, I've had to deal with women attacking me. Um, another thing that bothers me is the fact that women think that there is something called pretty privilege. I don't think that thing exists. Do you? Yes. You do? Yes. Let me, oh, okay. let me, let me, let me, let, let me just define the word privilege first. Okay, let's go to the dictionary. Privilege. A special right, advantage, or immunity granted or available only to a particular person or group. Okay. Is there, oh, in similar words, advantage, right, benefit, birthright, prerogative, entitlement, benefit, advantage. Is there an advantage for pretty people? Yes. Pretty people do get extra benefits, not because they have a birthright to it. It is because People want something from them. So in order to win somebody over to their side, right, they get mm -hmm. extra privileges just by the way they look. However, there is always another side of the coin. Pretty people also get discriminated against due to the assumption that they have it so easy in life because of their privilege. So they also attract negativity. They, they attract haters. They attract people who try to sabotage them. There are two sides to every coin. So just because you have that negative side does not mean that there are no benefits to being pretty. It's a catch 22. Well, well, the reason why I say this is because I've been on both sides of the fence. Um, for about 10 years, I was a stripper and then I was a stay at home mom. So once I became a stay at home mom, you know, I got abused by my husband a lot and by his mother. Mm -hmm. So I lost that woman power that I had as a stripper because that was the most empowering thing that I that I've ever had. But I felt bad because um my christian black my because of my christian background um you have to excuse me i'm nervous and i've been drinking a little bit mm -hmm. but because of my christian background i was taught to you know get married and settle down and i didn't want to be in a strip club for too long and then i was alone like i don't have a close relationship with my mother mm -hmm. uh, my mother always seen me as competition so i grew up with a mom that was a pygmy. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think that there's a, an advantage for me because it's like a double-edged sword. It's like, yes, sometimes men are nice to me. Sometimes I get free stuff. Um, I got the stay-at-home mom life. But when you tell a man no or you reject them or you don't mm -hmm. do something that they want, you can be sexually assaulted or you can be abused. Absolutely. Not only that, I'm dealing with the jealousy from women all the time, from my own mother, from women in my own family, um, trying to work a job and dealing with women blackballing me. There is a scale of beauty and men are visual, so I don't like when women try to act dumb to the fact that... Um, men prefer certain types of things, especially when it when certain things are trendy. Like one minute light skin and wavy hair will be the wave. So you'll see someone get jealous of light skin women with wavy hair, but then now it's men want the natural hair and the dark skin and the afro. But that's why that's but, here's the thing. but here's the thing. I've been on both sides of the fence. But the, here's the thing. This is why it's important for women 
to disconnect from all of this shit because that's in the nature of a male to divide and conquer. Divide and conquer is a power tactic. Males are power hungry. So the only hope at getting any power is through female resistance and female competition. Female resistance and female competition. These are the two sources of power that men typically tap into. This is why it is important for women to stop seeking male validation because ain't no such thing as an undesirable woman. They want to use y'all all for something and make y'all mm -hmm. think that one is better than the other. The male is not going to stop doing that because as he's playing you two against each other, you all offer up all the rewards. So let me pull out one of my books and read it straight to you. Let me read it straight to you at the horse's mouth. Okay. I agree with you, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Those standards do change. And that's why I don't like when they come up to me and they say, I love your afro. I wish more hair. I, I wish more women would wear their hair like you. I hate that shit. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, I look them dead in the face, and I'm like, wasn't years ago? Y'all didn't even like nappy hair. So if you're gonna compliment me, just tell me you like my hair and keep it moving. But don't compare me to the next woman and try to make the woman beside me with a wig feel bad. I hate that shit. Yeah, but then I still have to deal with women. You know, picking on me because of my hair or telling me my hair is nappy or trying to stick their hands in my hair and shit like that. So, you know, I deal with all types of um, bullshit when it becomes behind this pretty privileged thing. I don't really feel that. Yeah, baby. I feel like sweetheart. I get it sometimes, but I get a lot of hate but, more than I get the privilege. But, but, sweetheart, sweetheart, listen to me. I don't care what it is in life. I don't care what it is. It's a, it's a double side to every coin every last coin right so broke people have access to uh, food stamps right and and welfare but they have less freedom but all of their basic needs are taken care of by the government but you lose your freedom having a lot of money gets you higher taxes but you have more freedom right you you also have more people trying to 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 seek out claims against you when you have a company that's making multi m millions of dollars so now you have to pay a team let me tell you something with every good comes some bad right and with every bad comes some good it's really just about how you look at it right so ain't no such thing on the planet as all benefit and no risk or all reward and no risk, all pros and no cons that comes with everything. So, yes, you cannot deny your privilege just because you have the other side of the coin, too. It's you gonna experience both of those things. Everything got a shadow side to it. You know, everything got polarity. Everything got duality. So, you know. It's what you want to focus on. But the key, the, the key to this shit for women is you have to stop focusing on men. Decenter men is the answer to this. So right out of Pimpin' Ken's 48 Laws of the Game, right? A male, right out of there. Chapter 29 or law number 29, the ism, a good pimp will always use his hoes to cross one another. This is not hard to do. Every hoe's ambition is to be the bottom bitch. Every hoe's ambition is to be the bottom bitch. You want male validation so damn badly that you're willing to cross another woman. Every hoe's ambition is to be the bottom bitch. She will lie, steal another hoe's money, and even set a trap for a hoe to get caught by the police to take her spot. She will do anything to be favored by one. This is what, this is what the centralization of males does to women. The centralization of males 
destroys the community of women and make them compete against each other. You don't let value compete with value because when you make the value compete with value, you get more value poured into the motherfucker that's making y'all compete with each other. So she will do anything to be favored by one. So it's to a pimp's advantage to play one hole against the next competition breeds excellence if you can get your workers going at one another each trying to outdo the others you will always win you do not want them to be friends when it, you want them to distrust and dislike one another so that you end up controlling them both Ooh. women fighting for men gives men all of the rewards so if you women have to be deprogrammed, they got to be deprogrammed to stop acting like males because competition is the nature of a male. Let me pull up my research paper one more time so the research paper can tell you that the that competition is the nature of a male. Uh, okay show it to you okay I hold on I'm, I, I got it I got it on the screen I, okay so testosterone plays a significant role in the arousal of these behavioral manifestations thoughts anger verbal aggressiveness competition and competition dominance behavior to physical violence Competition is a key behavior or aspect of testosterone. By men, by women centering men, you create competition between you and other women for the male who can tell you that he ain't the value. Women are born with value. We, we, we're not born with value. We have to build value. That's why our past don't matter. And a woman's past matters more. Our future matter more because we're not born with value. We got to build value. The male don't have no fucking value. And then the dumb ass woman who has the value is fighting with another woman that got the value. And then this motherfucker without no value is sucking you both dry because you're both dumb as a box of goddamn rocks. Exactly. I agree. I have a question to what you're speaking on right quick. Can I cut in? Go ahead. Um, so what do you think about polygamy? Because I've always wanted to have sister wives if I was going to deal with a husband. And that's just me personally. Um, I'm bisexual and I feel like I get most of my emotional support from a woman. I only see a man as a provider. That's it. Well, men are not providers by nature. Women are. Everybody taps into the resource of women. Every company, if you are a, in sales, the sales, all sales or the majority of sales that ain't dealing with heavy machinery and shit like that company to company. At the end of the day, the majority of sales are directed at women. Women are the resource women are nature's resources so everybody's targeting women so why in the fuck would women try to look for men to be providers and protectors when men target women to get they damn resources out of and then y'all as women begging this nigga for crumbs that he took the world from other women if men are looking to use women for resources, why the fuck won't women keep the damn resources in their own goddamn hands and provide and protect for themselves? Since I do think we can have our own stream of income. No, 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 no. You miss. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I didn't say own stream of income. I said own resources. Women, men look good 
from the work and the labor of women. So the male that you quote unquote wants to be the provider or protector is leaning on women to get the resources that he has. So if that's the case, why won't women stick to each other and create the resources within the community, create businesses, business partnerships amongst themselves that generate all the resources. And if a male comes, it's because all y'all want to do is use his body to produce children. But who wants to produce children in, in this toxic ass world that's under a spiritual war right now? Mm -hmm. Right. We are too mm -hmm. focused on biological bullshit because with all of the stuff that I'm teaching over here about the nature of men, the, the chemical composition of seminal fluid, what the shit do to a female's brain and all of that. This idea that we still got to keep fucking with men on some level, it, that shit got to go. Because but that's not what but that's but that's not what I mean. That's why I say I'm into polygamy because my idea is I would rather just get a house with my lesbian lover, and if we do deal with a man, he needs to pay the bills or he can get the fuck out. Yeah, for but, the man who no, will pay the bills, but, but, but we still have our own money. We still have our re our own resources. You, you're missing up. You're missing I'm not a, saying it on a no. I need a man type of no, thing. No, I'm not saying that either. You're missing the point. Men bring destruction. The chaotic nature of a male, right? You bring that shit into a group and this is the way they behave. Their intent is to behave by dividing and conquering and bringing fucking confusion into the group. That's the nature of the male. He can't stop that behavior, right? So the idea that women are still even rolling on the if a man comes in, women need to get out of the whole idea of just thinking about a male coming in at all when, they, when they're so devolved. W women got to get out of this, I just need sex or I just want them around. If y'all got, got a half a million dollars coming into the house between two or three women, why would you want a male at all in that mix with his chaotic nature? Hmm. I thought women wanted peace. I thought women wanted function. I don't understand the, the, the idea because I'm not pushing polyg polygamy, right? I'm not pushing that mm -hmm. because the male is too devolved, way too devolved to be bringing somebody who ain't worked on themselves, their spirit, their mind or nothing. And all they want is the opportunity to have sex with multiple women. This shit got to move beyond pussy and dick and, 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 and some chump change. The male needs to learn well, how to can, survive on his be, own. I can be honest and say I agree with you now that you break it down like that because I have been in some polygamous situations and I thought that the woman would get jealous and it was always the man that got jealous. Yeah, so my question again, why would women want to bring that chaotic energy in there? It, 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 it makes no sense. Right. Because the nature of a male is destructive. So do you think women should just be lesbians? I think women need to make logical, rational decisions. Here's the thing. I don't tell no woman which way to go, but I do give women five choices. OK, I do give mm -hmm. women five choices. Choice number one. Continue to deal with males, knowing all of the shit that you know about them after you listen to me long enough and read my books and come to my workshop. You come to my workshop, read my books and watch my channel for a week and you still want to fuck with men, then you are on your damn own. And anything that happens to you, you deserve it. You ask for it. And I don't want to hear shit about it. I don't want to hear nothing about it. Two. 
you can mas- you can play with yourself. Okay? Masturbation. They got a bunch of toys out there that are, that are, that'll vibrate your shit smooth off, right? An easy way to clitoral mutilation without the pain. Right? You can go you can vibrate your shit off with total pleasure, okay? Number 3. You can zip up your pussy and forget that you even got one. Four, you can get you a woman, right? Now, with four, I chose four, right? I stopped dealing with men and I chose option number four. The reason that I chose option number four is because the, I, want, I want mental, emotional, spiritual connection with a person, right? I don't feel like I have to go without that just because the retarded ass male can't do it. Since you can't do it, who the hell say I can't get it from a woman because that's the only person that's capable of doing it. So I'm not sexually driven by humans, okay? Male or female, it doesn't matter. I'm more of a sapiosexual, demisexual. So sex will come in. So I just say, okay, I just deal with women. But here's the thing. You got a fifth option. You got a fifth option. You can you can be deplorable and just go bestiality. Go 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 marry you a horse. Yeah, go 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 fuck a horse or a ca- or a bull, right? But I'm gonna tell you if you gonna choose option number one and still fuck with men, Miss Shit, Mister Shitty Booty. You know where seven out of ten of them sit on the 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 bed and they get up with shit stains? Yeah, shitty booty with gooch grease and dick cheese, right? You can go with them. And if you choose that option, it's just like choosing option number five. It's just like being it's just like fucking a horse or a dog. So if you choose one, you might as well fuck a dog. So hey, you got Five options, whichever option you choose. But I'm telling you that your best options are between two and four. Fucking with men in a, in a time where they're restricting resources and males operate in scarcity mode and women are a resource to men and women are moving away from men. I need you to understand the males become increasingly more violent increasingly Mm -hmm. more dangerous Mm -hmm. and with women being separated from each other creates a vulnerability to in women the power lies within a community of women that will stave off and control males because males do not like women in groups because that's too much of a power source Only if women are on the same goddamn page. When men come into the mix, their intent is to break up the bond between women. And if women are not solid on their bond, you will let a raggedy ass, no good male who just want to use both of y'all. And then you're both rewarding this raggedy motherfucker with sex. That he didn't earn just because y'all want to be on the lower echelon and still fuck to get a a a a biological feeling when 80 percent of y'all ain't even orgasming with penetrative sex. What the fuck you letting this dude use you for as a masturbation device? Half of these women or 90 percent of these women literally sit up there and let a nigga pound on them. Why they thinking about doing the laundry, wondering when this motherfucker going to come. Oh, I wish he hurry up and get up. 80% don't goddamn orgasm. And then they sitting there thinking about what kind of dinner they going to cook, hoping that he start coming. And then she start fake moaning uh, uh, so he can hurry up and get off her. Sound real goddamn heterosexual to me. And it sounds real, sounds like a human blow up doll to me. I don't understand why women still want to be fucking with men. At all. Dealing, given the nature that you already know and experience with them. Leave they ass alone. What's so hard about that? You know, I've always had my sexual climaxes with a woman. Always. I have had it with 
some men, but I've always had it with a woman. Sometimes I felt like I was only putting on a performance for a man. So why? So, you so, about so why? So if that's the case, why I'm are you why. Yeah, still asking me about polygamy and still giving these niggas a, a damn safe haven to go to for nothing? You ain't getting shit out the motherfucker but a goddamn headache. You might as well drop the bisexual and just be a damn lesbian. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Look, <laughs> I appreciate your call. Let me get to let okay. me get to a couple more. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hello. Who's speaking? Hi, this is Tony. Hey, Tony, what you got for me? Okay, so one, I love everything you talk about. I'm new to your content. I was at work, and um, a coworker. I was technically it was a technician. Mm-hmm. A coworker technician. He was telling me about his dating life. And when he was describing the women, he was talking about what they could do for him. He never said that he loved them. And he said that both women wanted to marry him. And the whole time he's talking, he's basically saying how the women were like identical in terms of his preference, blah, 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 whatever. And all I could think about was, oh my God, Priscilla said that Men use women. He didn't say, oh, I love her. You know, he said one, the difference between the two was one's voice was more attractive to, to, more attractive to him than the other. And what these women brought to the table was one was um, she had like both of them were into Bitcoin. They had helped him make at least 30000 plus dollars since meeting them. Um. They were attractive. He showed me their pictures. He said that they had been like divorced or whatever. And what else did he mention? Um, just he he only mentioned what they could do for him. He didn't mention nothing about his feelings towards them. Mm-hmm. And all I could think about was, damn, she said this is how they think. So it just blew my mind, and I um have been implementing the things that I've heard you say as far as like decentering men do not seek validation from men and it has completely like I'm still a work in progress but it's completely changed my perspective and um, the guy that I am dealing with just for transparency the guy that I am dealing with now that I'm just like really putting myself first in so many ways he's like blowing me up and even still i'm just like wow okay mm-hmm. you must want something out of me now that i'm not like all up on you now you all up on me and i'm just like hmm it's it's just it's interesting so i, I don't have your book yet i will be getting the book uh 41 something 41 shades men. of men yes 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 so i love what you're doing i'm like i said i'm still new to your content and I respect you so much and I've listened to a lot of women call in and I'm just like wow I can relate to a lot of the story so I just wanted to call in and just give you a props and just thank you for how you've been like helping me I'm in my uh, late 30s mm-hmm. so I don't have kids um, I just work and stuff like that so yeah that's that's what I wanted to say awesome thank you so much I appreciate you Thank you. All right. Back. All right. I'm going to take one more call and then I'm going to read these super chats and then I'm going to let y'all go. Uh, I think, well, maybe I did call. Well, let's see. Okay. 3607. Okay. This will be, be the last call. Last call for alcohol.
All right, that person probably went to sleep. Okay, so let's go ahead and call out these super chats and see see who all supported us tonight. <sighs> okay, all right, okay. So Miss Tish Posh, twenty dollar sticker. Thank you. Zero tolerance, ten dollars. We appreciate all you do. Thank you. I'm hooked. One ninety nine sticker. Mary Chance, five dollars. Another educational learning into the mind, leaning into the mind of the pick Misha. L A. Twenty dollars. P on point. Thank you. No vows, no vag no vagina breed out. <laughs> Ten dollars. Collection plate is out, ladies. Go in person, pay the pastor for dropping all the uh, dropping all night long, Pastor P. Going strong. I love you. Thank you. Tammy Banderas, two dollars. Pastor P going in tonight, ain't she? DJ Torch and Friends, five dollars. Warning real talk real talk zone in effect. And Aaron Franco, five dollars. You have changed my life. Thank you so much. I get a lot of people reaching out to me, telling me I didn't change their life. That's the goal here. That is the goal. And once I change your life, you got to understand you have to begin to look at the feminine differently. You got to start looking at other women differently. You cannot be in competition with a woman. Ain't nothing to compete against. Laquan Daniels. Five dollars. Thank you. Jamerus Gilliam. Five dollars. Long time no see. Jamerus SWG. Forty thousand and onwards. Thank you. Five dollars. Linda Crooms. Twenty dollars. Thank you. Stella Information. Laura or Lauren. Five dollars. Thank you. Brittany Lynch. Five dollars. And Alyssa Meeks. Six dollars. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. Listen, you already know how this rolls. Um, when we end this, you can go back and watch the um the replay monday i will be broadcasting uh the interview that i had with the primatologist franz the wall um after after that i'm going to dissect that interview because i want i want you to keep in mind that i really just only asked him a bunch of questions there was not really much of a conversation there. It was just me asking questions, right? And the answers that I got to these questions, I want to draw some conclusions for you and tie some knots together so that you can see. It's some real interesting information that I got out of him, okay, um, that I want to present to y'all. I got one person here saying that they got something to share, Um I'm going to call them and let y'all hear them, and uh, then I'm going to let you go. Hello? Hello, this is Princella speaking. Girl, I didn't know you were going to call. What's up, Princella? This is Tony from L.A. So, what is your advice of dealing with the pick me? What's your advice? Dealing with them, stay away from them. Real I simple. live with them. <laughs> I live with them. <laughs> I live with them. And it's tough. And it's catty. It's nasty. It's like I I rose above. You know, I, I came in tune with who I am. And I let go of that nasty male attention. And I, I don't even want to be in a relationship with men anymore. And so... Now that I've left that, I have this still energetic bond with these pick -me's and I just don't know how to maneuver out of that. And I feel like a lot of people will have the same issue, probably. Yeah, I, I'll have to tell you, you're going to have to move out. <laughs> yeah, you're right. All right, and then the last thing I wanted to say, too, is um that the white lady that you had, there was a... A video that you were sharing earlier and it was a black lady who was in a car I think and then she was sharing what another what a white lady was talking about you know what I'm talking about? you just shared it today did I share it on the live tonight or yeah, yeah you shared it on the live tonight okay uh, what, what was it was yeah I'm trying to remember it was about um uh, how the white households would look because of money and how that doesn't apply to minorities. 
And then the black lady cut it short to, to like throw a narrative of just like having that same type of standard all across, but it doesn't apply to minorities like it does to white women or white families. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I don't know. I'm. I'm not remembering okay. what video that is. All right. Well, the girl in that, the white lady, her name is T. Uh, Teal Swan. Mm-hmm. And she she's known to you know just speak about issues, especially when it comes to um, spirituality and stuff. And I just think that you and her. Speaking would be really interesting, and I, I hope to see that one day. So I'm just saying that. Okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah, I would love to see that. <laughs> you were like, you, you shut it down, girl. <laughs> you shut it down. <laughs> anyway, and you awesome. Thank you so much. Every time I need to like tap in and just remember, I'm always listening to you and supporting you. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Keep up the good work. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you have a good night. <laughs> thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Right, right. All right, y'all. It's uh, I got two more cash apps to come through here. Let me read them real quick, and I'm gonna let y'all go. I'm gonna let y'all go ahead and ride out. Okay. Uh. Uh, I got a turquoise, turquoise Rashad, $35, 41 shades on fire. Thank you so much. I'm glad you like the book. Uh, Starlet, $10, much support and appreciation. I appreciate y'all. If you're new, thank y'all so much for coming to the high power podcast, stick around and go browse around a lot of the content. I'm sure you'll enjoy it and you will change your life. My next workshop, when I post it, make sure you join that too because that's something very powerful that you ain't going to get nowhere else. I can prove that men are incapable of love. I show you that you don't know what love is and I can teach you how to spot manipulation out of anybody uh, using the concept of love. Anyway, it's been good. If you're in Houston, Texas, I'm going to be doing a live poetry show tomorrow at the comedy uh, at the comedy lounge. Come out there and support your girl. I'll see y'all when I see you. Peace.